Hello, everybody, and welcome to an another round of um, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee races. And I believe this is the eighth race. And today I'm joined by Leggy Starscream. And we're going to be watching a race between Headstrong, Iron, and Yaxo. Leggy, what do you think about this race coming up? I think this race is going to be incredible. We've got, you know, three wonderful runners. We've got so much let's go action going on. I've enjoyed every single one of these races I've caught. And I'm assuming today is going to be no exception. Yeah, I agree for sure. And uh, as we look in here, the runners load up. They're going to ooh, pick their Joy-Con. Headstrong, left Joy-Con. Can't say I'm a fan of that. <laughs> um, and then Iron loading up as well. Yaxo ready to go. And we have two runners doing Pikachu. Uh, Iron and Yaxo versus Headstrong is going to be running Eevee. And we're going to get started in just a second. Yep, we're giving our runners a little time to ready up, get through that introductory cutscene. Time will start for them the moment they hit begin game. All right, and we're off. So what we're looking at here for this category is we're going to be doing any percent, and it's going to be no mount skip, uh, which we'll talk about and comes into play much later in the run. But the gist is we need to uh, go through all the gems, get all the badges, go through the lead four and beat the game as fast as possible. Now we're going to set up and see which character everyone chooses. Girl one, girl one, boy one for Yaxo. Interesting choices. Yeah, technically boy one is the fastest option. There's one less movement there, but like... It, that also kind of makes it a default choice. Um, yeah. I do appreciate Girl 1. I am a Girl 1 uh, stan. Me too, me too. Um, I think Boy 1's probably about half a second faster because you don't have to move the cursor over. Um, but generally, it doesn't change anything throughout the rest of the run. The text is all the same speed and everything, so it's just a preference. Yep, yep. And, you know, we also have other runners who like, you know, spicy picks like you know, girl three, um, obviously, you know, some of these options cost a little bit of time, but over the course of, you know, this is Let's Go, this is a three hour run with a high amount of variance. Pick the character you want the best, it's not going to affect the standings. Um, but now that we are in the game, having been isekai into the world of Pokemon, we need to do some settings changes. Most of these are just for speed, we're turning animations off, we're increasing the text speed. Uh, we're able to skip some pre-rendered cutscenes. Uh, we'll talk about those as they come up, but we're also changing the battle setting to set rather than switch. Uh, rest in peace as of Generation 9. Yeah, it's uh, setting up the menus first very quick, and then we're just going to run out here. It's going to be pretty standard until we catch our first Pokemon and then we'll be able to see all the, the stats and everything that they come with. But right now it's pretty much the same for these runners here. Um, so just a little bit about them. Uh, Headstrong has made quite a, quite a few good times for this game here. I think her PB is around 301, which is uh, quite fast. Um, so we'll say the favorite here, but I think this could be a very exciting race because Iron has a lot of experience with a lot of Pokemon games. Um, so I think it's going to be very competitive here. And then Yaxo, uh, a newer runner to Let's Go Eevee, but uh, I'm excited to see what happens here between these three racers. Yeah, chat has a really interesting question uh, that you know we'll probably be answering over the entire course of the run, uh, but where does most of the variants come into play regarding completion times? Ah, that's a good question. So I think a lot of the variance comes from uh, which Pokemon decide to spawn and then what your stats are for your uh, Eevee or Pikachu. Because every time you level up, um, based on your nature, but also 
uh, what are called your AVs. Um, you get certain stats sort of somewhat randomly as you level up. So higher attack, higher special attack, very good. But if you get a bunch in like defense and hit points, that's not very desirable for a speed run. Um, but also because we're going to need to catch 50 Pokemon, which is the number uh, beside the runner's names there. Right now it's one out of 50 because they have their starter Pokemon. Uh, you need 50 Pokemon to get into Koga's gym much, much, much later in the run. So we're going to be trying to catch 50 Pokemon as fast as possible. And some of them are pretty quick. Some of them are pretty easy, uh, but sometimes they just don't show up. So that's where a lot of the variance comes in. Sometimes you get a very easy what's called catch route um, where, you know, the Pokemon you want show up right on schedule. You don't have to wait around. And sometimes uh, it's a little bit tougher as maybe like a Rhyhorn or something doesn't show up and uh, can slow you down quite a bit. Yep, and yes. there can also be a lot of variants in terms of, you know, your standard Pokemon variants, like if you miss a range because your stats are in an interesting spot. Um, additionally, during the individual catches themselves, uh, you can run into issues where Pokemon act in certain patterns, like you saw with the Eevee and the Pikachu, they're jumping around, they're occasionally doing attacks where they can't be caught. Uh, most Pokemon have some, a few set patterns they go through, but some of them are easier to work around than others, and that can cause a little bit of variance. And if your motion controls are a little bit off, like Iron was unfortunately with his first throw, you can run into issues where your experience route is a little bit off based off mm -hmm. of the catches you see. Absolutely, and I'll say, um... Interestingly, none of the players check their Eevee's uh, natures before leaving the lab. So there's there's two different strategies here you can do. Um, oftentimes, what a lot of beginners will do, and I mean I did and when I did the race, is you'll check your Pokemon's nature in the lab right as soon as you get access to it and make sure it doesn't have like minus attack, for example. Uh, and then if it does, you just reset. Um, but the other option, which is, you know, faster if you have a good uh, Pokemon, is to just wait until... Uh, your first battle or your first experience, depending on Pikachu or Eevee. And then you can look at the stats of your Pokemon and infer their nature, which saves you having to check the menu. Um, so here, it's pretty brave of these three runners to actually go in and just chance it. And they'll see when they either fight a Rattata coming up or fight a Caterpie, what their nature and what their stats are. And we're all just going to cross our fingers that uh, they don't have minus attack <laughs> or minus special attack because uh, that would make the run pretty pretty tough um, and i will say that um, going back to what we said earlier there's a lot of different pokemon that can pop up your experience that you get can vary wildly your stats can vary wildly so i have heard this game and speedrunning it be um, compared much more to a randomizer uh, and i think that's quite true um, people say there's no two runs are the same in this game and after doing hundreds of runs myself, I can say that's that's absolutely true as well. Um, so here we have the first fight against Rival One, and ooh, a very good attack from uh, from our Eevee there for Headstrong. Yeah. Two oh, shots, the Rival One, which is pretty nice. Um, typically, for Eevee, it's uh, three. You're satisfied. Four, you're you're maybe resetting, but two, very good there. Um, and then over on the Pika side, you're expecting to see a uh, four shot. You can get a three shot if you're lucky. Yeah, and uh, based on the damage that Headstrong did, pretty confident this is a plus attack Eevee, um, which is obviously very good. We're just going to hope it's not like plus attack minus special attack or plus attack minus speed because there's always the trade off. If you have plus one stat, you gotta have minus another. So um, if we have the plus attack, we're gonna hope it's something like defense or special defense, uh, which mm -hmm. would make it very favorable. Yeah, headstrong. The first up to our first random trainer encounter. <laughs> um, our Pika runners will be able to evaluate their Pikachu stats after this fight. Unfortunately, because of a uh, slight variance in the amount of experience uh, in that first rival fight, uh, Headstrong is going to have to wait until she gets into the forest to see what her Eevee's stats are. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and uh, let's see. I'm killing the Rattata here, and they're ignoring all the Pokemon outside of here because they're much lower level, and we're generally going to wait uh, to catch the Pokemon inside the forest because then we can make a higher level to get more experience, and also they will evolve sooner. Um, from a speedrunning perspective, it would be pretty inefficient to start catching Pokemon out there. All right, uh, so we have uh, Yaxo's Pikachu being plus attack. I missed which... Uh, stat was minus, but that is definitely plus attack. Oh, and Iron has a minus attack Pikachu. Oh, no. Uh, oh, with all his experience, hopefully he's uh, able to navigate this. Or yeah. get a ton of experience somewhere for uh, Pikachu <laughs> to level up. Yeah, in one of the great things about this particular tournament and the way that it's evolved the speed run, like in a PB attempt, if I, I see a Pikachu like Irons, I hit that reset run right away. But because of this tournament, because runners wanted to avoid the 30 seconds of time loss to checking your nature, uh, resetting to your backup file, and just wanted to really develop strats to run out basically any starter that you can get here, um, I trust that Iron feels confident going into this, knowing that you know, this was a possibility and that he has mm -hmm. the strats for mitigating the this mm -hmm. as you go. Yeah, and we get confirmed the headstrongs um EV is plus attack. I didn't catch what the minus uh was, but we'll be able to see that again soon enough. Mm -hmm. um, but right now they're running through the forest and uh, what we'd like to see is an early Bulbasaur, early Pikachu to catch. Uh, that would be nice, but we're kind of ignoring everything else uh, until we yep. get the lure. And then once they get the lure, they're going to want to pop that and start catching. Then the catch route is a go. There is an alternative strat that some runners like to do <laughs> in the grass just outside of the forest, where if you see a Weedle or Caterpie, you can pick it up early to get yourself on a catch chain, which affects the odds of rare Pokemon spawning, and also lets you start uh, your lured catches with the two-player mode, but none of our runners elected to do that. I think only one of them even saw a Weedle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, I like that advanced strategy of catching the Weedle, depositing it, and then catching the Kakuna, um, because you get a little bit extra experience, but in a race setting like this, it's a little risky and, and maybe not the best strategy. Yeah. Um, but here um, we can see Yoxo and Headstrong both pop the lure. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to be looking for a Weedle, a Caterpie, uh, a Bellsprout or Oddish, and then maybe a, a Pikachu or Bulbasaur as well. Yep. Iron runs into a Pikachu. Unfortunately, Iron is not the runner who can <laughs> get away with catching Pikachu today. I yeah. swear to God, I think something changed in the game's code overnight. I saw so many Pikachus when I was doing a practice run the other day, and Iron's uh, game appears to be no exception with another one already on screen. <laughs> so one thing that's nice about this, this game in this category is once you have the second Pokemon... Oh, there's a Bulbasaur for Headstrong. That's huge. Uh, and it's lured. Um, but once you catch a second Pokemon, you can summon a second controller, as you can see Headstrong's doing right now. And then that makes the catch percentage is just way, way, way higher. Uh, a lot of guaranteed catches, which relieves a lot of frustration. Um, so that's the benefit of uh, pulling out the second controller in this instance. Uh, and then you also, I believe, get more experience when you do that too. Yep. And it uh, you'll notice that a lot of our runners are going for uh, the Raspberry, which is an item that increases the odds that you'll catch the Pokemon for that one instance on their one controller catches. But again, doing that menu takes time. If you have the second player, if you have the uh, your support trainer out already, um, you can just go right away, throw both Pokeballs and get that boost to your catch rate. When Headstrong gets the Bulbasaur, that means she can skip the Bell Sprout if she wants. Um, a common thing to do would be is if you get the Bulbasaur, still catch the Bell Sprout, but then you deposit it uh, because Bulbasaur levels up at, or sorry, Bulbasaur evolves at level 16, Bell Sprout evolves at 21, and also learns moves at 16, 17, and 18. So Bell Sprout pretty slow. Um, so if 
You get the Bulbasaur, a lot of times it's worth considering just uh, catching Bellsprout for the experience and depositing it, so we'll see if Headstrong goes that route. On the other hand, for our Pika Runners, even if, even if they did see a Bulbasaur, they would still very, very much want to catch an Oddish. <laughs> um, Eevee has a re relatively easy time dealing with Brock. Pikachu gets hardwalled by Brock's uh, part ground type Pokemon, so Pikachu runners catch an Oddish to use Absorb, which a Oddish with a reasonable special attack will just one-shot both of Brock's Pokemon. Yeah, so we're going through some evolutions here. We're starting to see why catching the bugs is so beneficial, is because they level up or they evolve in one level, which you know contributes to that 50 Pokemon we're trying to get through throughout the run. Um, but then also they evolve twice. So really just um, level up once, level them up again at level 10, and then you get three catches, or sorry, <laughs> three Pokedex entries uh, for one catch, which is very efficient. So that's why Viridian Forest takes a little bit of time sometimes, but it's a good way to build up that Pokedex for later on in the run. Yoxo finding the Rep 2 Oddish basically right away. That's always really good to see. Um, if you don't see an Oddish in the forest, you might have to reset the route a couple of times, like unfortunately Iron, Iron has to do yeah. here, to get one to spawn. Because again, you need that grass type in order to get in the front door of Brock's gym. Luckily, mm -hmm. Iron gets it on the uh, second spawn and gets a glowing Rattata and Pidgey if he wants to pick up the that little bit of extra early experience. Um, both of those Ooh. Pokemon are super common. They show up a lot later. So if you see glowing ones here, uh, it can be really advantageous to get ahead of some nasty early ranges. And that's what Headstrong's doing right now. She saw the glowing Rattata and went for it. Uh, great there instead of an excellent, but still going to be plenty of experience. Uh, let's see, the 7.4 multiplier, gain a bunch of levels, Eevee hits level 10, which is very important because you got to learn double kick. Oh wow, and it's the dream, yes, plus attack minus special defense for Eevee. So, very nice roll there for Headstrong. Um, and I will say here, uh, catching the Rattata is fine uh, when it's glowing because there's radicates all over the place. Catching Pidgey, though, is definitely a choice runners can make uh, that has consequences, because then later uh, you might have to catch a Pidgeotto. Oh my gosh. Headstrong, a glowing Bellsprout. She's going to be rolling in the experience here. Look, all I'm going to say is that if you wait to, uh, and bank on that Route 17 Pidgey, you might get hosed. Oh yeah. Parentheses, see my race run for more <laughs> details. <laughs> I just got distracted by the mountain of experience that Trong's going to have here. Right? Like, all of these runners getting some really good Route her 2 spots. Bugs here. are going to evolve here, so she'll be able to deposit um, Butterfree and Beedrill as well early, so they won't gain extra levels too. So it's looking good for Headstrong. Um, Iron getting catches done also goes for the Rattata. Pikachu level 11. Pretty nice. Metapod right on the cusp of evolving as well. Mm -hmm. And then Yoxo says we're good and moving on to the gym. So you can see the catch counts here. Uh, Yoxo is like ahead, right? Closer to the gym. Um, but you can see that he only has seven Pokemon versus Headstrong. Still back, still catching stuff, stuff still evolving. But she has uh, 10 Pokemon caught. I think that might even be more um, if she updates the tracker. I'm not sure. But either way, while it looks like she might be behind, the fact that she has caught more Pokemon um, could technically mean she's ahead because she's, everyone has to get to 50 no matter what. Uh, thank, thank you, chat, for putting the copy pasta about <laughs> <laughs> let's go uh, catch routing and pacing in chat. Um, it's undeniable that one Pokemon is worth 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. It's approximately 30 seconds. It's a good rule of thumb. Uh, what's more important at this stage, more Pokemon or more progress? This early on, I would argue that uh, more catches are probably the most important thing, at least for my money. 
Um, having a lot of catches in your Pokedex means that you are creating a buffer for later on in case mm -hmm. important Pokemon don't spawn. Yeah. And also uh, getting the experience early uh, can make the, the fights easier too, as your stats are high, especially if you have minus attack like iron. Um, I believe it was iron, right? Is going to yes. really just want extra levels um, just to, to increase those stats just to help out there. Yeah. And like progress is going to happen regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, as you go, you're still going to have to go through all the same things, but getting ahead of a lot of the catches, getting ahead of any potential bad RNG, uh, both from damage ranges and Pokemon not spawning is going to be really, really useful for our runners. Yeah, now we can see that Headstrong's uh, doing the fight against Brock and the Geodude, and you'll see the EV version of this, where uh, this is why it's really important to hit level 10, is because we need to use double kick here, um, versus the other two runners are stuck doing their evolutions that Headstrong already did, so you can kind of see already the give and take between evolutions and progress. It might actually even out pretty soon here, <laughs> um, as all the Pokemon evolve that Headstrong powers through the gym. Uh, but I believe her Eevee is still level 12, so it does need a Tail Whip here. Interestingly, if the Eevee is 13, uh, you're strong enough that you can just double kick without using Tail Whip. But, ooh, that's a big hit. This Eevee is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, both of our Pika Runners through Brock, uh, they do have a little bit of an easier time with that. Um, and one of the interesting things about this run is as our runners go through it because we have uh, one EV and two Pikachu runners, we'll start to see some of the difference in strategies and where one game pulls ahead, the other one will start pulling ahead a little bit later on. You know, there's this really nice back and forth through this early segment based off of the starters and available Pokemon that really syncs up uh, once we get access to Surf. Yeah, or, excuse cool. me, Sea Skin. <laughs> Yeah, once uh, once they get the Starmie, it all pretty much averages out. Um, but that's about uh, an hour and 20 minutes from now, I would say. <laughs> so Indeed. We're going to have a little bit of variance on the way there. Yeah. Um, the point being, you know, there will be there will be some spots where Eevee's going to have a much better time than Pikachu. Yaxo finds the Mankey. And there is a little bit of extra... Uh, variants with which bonus Pokemon can spawn. There are a number of Pokemon floating around that sometimes show up, but we don't really count on them. This Mankey is one of them. The Pikachu in the forest and the Bulbasaur in the forest are another. Um, and depending on which version of you are on, you will see different ones showing up. Yeah, and for the Eevee version here, uh, Headstrong would like to see an Ekans, but not really totally needed because their catch count's looking pretty good. And and again, they don't give a ton of experience because they're not going to be lured and you just see them here, but um, it still is a quick catch and contributes towards your catch count. Uh, and she's going to be depositing a ton of Pokemon anyway when she gets into Mount Moon. So if she saw an Ekans here, I imagine she'd be pretty happy. Indeed. But it looks and, like you know, we don't. So, R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, uh, I am finding a Sandshrew, which is the other Pikachu exclusive mon on these routes. And, like, the other nice thing about these is that if you're on the edge of hitting the upcoming level barrier, um, getting these early, early catches, mm, yep. every little pinch of XP helps as we try to get to level 15 for Misty's gem. Absolutely. And here, uh, they all go in and to buy the Magikarp for the outrageous price of 500. Um, you know, I've, I've spent more on sushi and sashimi in my day, so maybe it's not too outrageous. But um, this is just a very quick purchase that will add to their catch count. So they all just make the quick stop there, get the Magikarp, and then we're going to run into uh, Mount Moon, where a little bit of variance is probably going to kick in. And this is where we'll see potentially some problems if certain Pokemon don't show up, or some interesting decisions if we see something like a Chansey or Clefable um, pop up. Indeed. Uh, the three big Pokemon all of our runners are looking for here are Geodude, Paris, and Clefairy. 
Um, and as previously mentioned, if we do see some of the bonus Pokemon, the Clefable and the Chansey, that'd be great. But our runners are really looking for the three uh, I mentioned in order to make sure that they get level 15 for Misty because mm -hmm. it is a hard requirement to get into her gym. And interestingly, Headstrong keeps the bell sprout. Um... I'll have to ask her afterwards. I think if she was pushing for a PB, she might not because it's level 9. So it needs to gain 12 levels to evolve. But I think for a race, it's probably a pretty safe strategy because it's, you know, you hang on to it, you just leave it in your party and um, it'll evolve eventually. Um, but I'm curious why she made that decision when Bulbasaur can kind of fill that niche uh, as you move on in the run. Yeah, like, I, I think it's it might be that sort of race safety you know, you have this extra catch in your pocket, no reason to squander it in case things don't spawn later. Yeah, like, absolutely. Um, but our runners running through, running into everyone's favorite hooligans from the anime who have made their way into this via yellow version. Yeah, and uh, Headstrong's going to go down to the bottom level here and pick up the Moonstone and I think she's early enough where she can try to get a second Moonstone, which we'll explain in a second but she's also got good Pokemon spawns, glowing Geodude, glowing Clefable earlier she was joking that she had a level 34 EV and that might happen again, which is an incredibly high level EV by the end um, so we'll see <laughs> yep really good throw on the Geodude, let's see what experience we get um when you see glowing Pokemon, there's two stages you can see. Most of the time, it's worth like one and a half to two times experience. I forget the exact number. But if you're really lucky, it can be super size and wor be worth a whole lot more. Uh, looks like that Geodude was just regular sized based off of the amount of XP Headstrong got. Uh, but there is that Chansey. Uh, sorry, Clefairy. Mm hmm. Dodging the Zubat, a time-honored tradition of Pokemon games. And let's see. Nice YOLO throw there on the Clefairy. Uh, so one interesting thing with this portion of the run is that the items respawn on the ground at midnight. So before the run, the runners set their timer to either 11.33 or 11.34 p.m., uh, with the goal of picking up the Moonstone like a minute or two before midnight, which Headstrong did. And then the clock rolls over and then it potentially spawns again. Um, so I'm sure Headstrong's going to check if a, a second one spawned and then Iron and Yaxo. Uh, I'm not sure if they got there on time and what they set their, their clock to on the Switch, but uh, let's see if they can get a double Moonstone as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still... Even if you do make it there in time perfectly, there's still only a 1 in 3 chance that you see the double moonstone. But if you do see it, that's just another free catch in your pocket. You mm -hmm. really, uh, really get some great benefits from No it. double moonstone for Headstrong. Um, saw her run over it, and I was like, oh, come on, stop and pick up the pick up the moonstone. But no. Find she does the find Paris a Paris in the transitional yeah. room. Very nice. Yaxo, good throw on the Clefa uh, Clefairy there as well. Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting the Pokemon they need, it seems like, which is very nice to see. Yep, yep. Uh, looks like Iron's going to be very good on experience after that catch. Even if he doesn't see a Paris, that's going to leave him in a good spot. And Yaxo is doing even better. The Pikachu's already level 14. I think at that point you're just shy of good enough to wander off and get XP from the traders and make your way up to 15. Um, yeah, I think um, before fighting, I forget uh, the, this kid's name that Headstrong's fighting, but before fighting this trainer, if you're like just over 14, I think then you're good. Like you get the one full level of experience from the trainers. Um, that's always how I remember it. Yeah. Um... The math is slightly off on Pikachu because uh, we do fight it with Oddish before we go down. True, true, true. Yeah. I always forget that Pika has many more complicated <laughs> aspects to it. As an EV runner and EV enjoyer, I'm just too lazy to do all that. <laughs> I mean, that that's why I'm here to, you know, to be, be the resident Pika. 
<laughs> so we go down and we see our favorite cat, Meowth. He's just gonna meow and run away. And we move on, and this is where runners can get pretty t frustrated if an onyx or something just pops up right in front of you and causes the encounter there. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Like, and then if it does, it's like a three to five second loss. Um, yeah. Trying to flee. Oh, like, rough screen for Iron. This is a maze. And yeah. That Zubat really wants him. What What are the other things that can be interesting in that particular section uh, from that ladder to this rocket trainer is just your lure is in some random state. It either ran out before you ran into the Meowth. I've seen it run out basically right in front of that rocket before, depending on your movement and where you initially use it. So getting swarmed by iron is... Good boy. That is the thing I've seen happen a number of times. <laughs> oh, but he does iron seem back Paris. to Paris. Yeah, nice. Did it pop up before the lure wore off, though? I'm not sure. Uh, level 7, no. I think that means it's not lure, right? Yeah. Um, the way lures work is that the they force the Pokemon in the area to spawn at the highest level they could spawn, plus one. So, uh, most Pokemon here are like 6 to 10, so that's why you see the lure Geodude and Clefairy on Ironside at level 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the lure unfortunately wore off uh, just before that, before the Paris spawn, so Paris was just level 7. But that might have been a benefit, because then I think the- Oh, there's that pop-up with the Geodude. Um, this game can be so trolly with those spawns. <laughs> I get so tilted when that happens. But, um, but also, Clefairy and Geodude learn moves at level 12, so... It might be a benefit if uh, Iron maybe deposits before the Geodude levels up and then doesn't learn to move there. Um, have to keep track of what he does here. Uh, meanwhile, Eevee is just beating everything down, level 16 already. Just stomping this Magnemite with double kick. Yeah, Headstrong taking her advantage with the plus attack on Eevee and really pushing it as far as she can with the extra experience. Um, I imagine she's going to just breeze through this early mid game. Yeah, I do think there's a danger of uh, the Starmie from Misty with the minus special defense. So that's something she'll have to be careful of. Um, so there will be a few, few fights. Uh, I assume she'll take them safe uh, as much as she can, but she does need to be mindful of the fact that her special defense is lower than normal and one bad crit from uh, you know a Starmie or something could really honestly kill the run. <laughs> um, so let's hope that yeah. doesn't happen as well. Yep. And actually Headstrong and Yakuza are pretty even here. Very, very similar. Iron not far behind actually in the fight just before Jesse and James. So yeah. With eggs ending Mount Moon, I think we're going to be... And the catch count, too. I think this is actually a very, very close race so far. Mm -hmm. uh, Iron's Pikachu is only at 30 attacks, so the Misty one-shot is not guaranteed. Even a little bit. I don't even think it's possible. What if it crits? I mean, just crit, right? Well, <laughs> funny you should mention that. <laughs> so I think now is about the time we should talk about the special moves that the starter Pokemon get in this game. As Headstrong runs uh, her way to Cerulean uh, City, inside the Cerulean uh, Pokemon Center is a move tutor who will teach your starter Pokemon uh, some really mm -hmm. broken OP moves. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Pikachu side, you learn Zippy Zap, which has plus two uh, priority right. and always crits. Yep. Eevee gets three different moves that I forget the name of. Do you want to go over them? Yeah, so Eevee, being the better Pokemon, of course, gets three different moves. <laughs> um, so Eevee will learn uh, Bouncy Bubble, which is a nice uh, water-type move, and then uh, Buzzy Buzz and Sizzly Slide. So Eevee will have Electric, Water, 
and fire. And then, of course, the neutral headbutt. So Eevee's pretty well equipped for, let's say, almost all the fights. Um, there's only one instance way, way, way later that we'll talk about. But that's why, for the most part, Eevee can just go through itself. Versus in Pika, um, Pika has to rely on, like, Oddish, for example, and a lot of other Pokemon, too. And speaking of Pika uh, having a rough go of it, uh, Iron's Pikachu is poisoned and at very low hit points. Oh no! Ooh. Ooh. Um, uh, but for, for those of you keeping score at home, I am just going to claim that Pika is better because we don't have to waste the time teaching two additional moves. That's fair. Yeah. Eevee needs a lot of training and, and education to get up to the full mm -hmm. potential. Pika is just naturally brilliant. Um, I can't read Eoxo's uh, level on his Pikachu, but he's uh, on 15 the now. rival... Yeah. Okay, just hit 15. That explains yeah. why he's doing the rival fight uh, yeah. before going into Misty's gym. Yeah, so you have to be 15 to get into Misty's gym, and if you're not, uh, because maybe your catches didn't go poor right or something, then a common strategy is to go take this rival fight and then just backtrack to the gym afterwards, because that gives you enough experience. It's a little out of the way, it costs a little bit of time, but it's better than having to throw in the towel. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, headstrong, going through the gym, and uh, here with Eevee, we're just going to use Buzzy Buzz, and this is sometimes a one-shot, given the level 16, there's a pretty good chance of it. I didn't see the special attack, but oh, survives at about two hit points, the Goldeen. Wait, this so is the range for Eevee? It is. It's actually pretty, oh. uh, more often than not, you don't kill the Goldeen there. Um, you need pretty good special attack for that. Look, uh, uh, as the resident Pika in the commentary booth, I'm used to only having to worry about Starmie. <laughs> uh, I mean, you do paralyze it and it, it doesn't really hurt you or anything, but it can, if you're low hit points, force you to have to heal before the Starmie. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see if... Yeah, she's playing it safe. Full heal the EV. So, uh, knock on wood, she'll be fine here for the fight. Uh, versus uh, Yoxo fighting the Goldeen. So this should be one shot. Yep. Uh, for Headstrong, is that was that HP total a range you would risk in, like, a PD attempt? Uh, it would depend on my special defense is. There's, uh, of course, a nice little little table. I think she was at 43 or 44. Um, so I would probably heal on this run that she's on right now, too. Yeah. Because she has a good catch count. She has a good Pokemon with plus attack. She has a good um, level. So... This is safe enough to heal. There's just always the trade-off where you might get burnt by the Starmie. And then if you get burnt, you need to um, burn heal that again afterwards. And it's a pain in the butt because you have to do two menus. Um, but looks like she'll be good. So uh, she'll be fine getting out of Misty's gym. Heck yeah. Strong finishing up Misty, Yaxo about to take on the Starmie as Iron is running on up to say hi to Misty. All of our runners shaking hands here in the Cerulean Gym. <sighs> yeah, so coming up is going to be uh, the favorite part of the run for commentators and runners alike, uh, where we go <laughs> cross Nugget Bridge and just have to fight, what, like five trainers in a row, which are all pretty pretty mindless fights um i would say though for the the rival fight here that headstrong's doing you do need to make sure you're out of quick attack range um so generally the rule of thumb is to stay above 13 hit points but if you're over leveled or you have more defense um you can generally fudge it a little bit uh but she should be fine here yeah she's definitely fine so she's yeah. just gonna steamroll through this this bridge here yeah the rival fight can be a little tricky on the pika side as well depending on how Starmie goes if you hit the range. Uh, Iron playing it safe with the minus attack and going for a two controller Misty fight uh, to ensure the one round on Starmie and gets through 
relatively painlessly. Pikachu's still at a good amount of hit points that he won't need to heal before going into the rival fight. Uh, might opt to heal on the Sandshrew fight, because otherwise that's just two headbutts and you're risking getting poisoned. What is Iron's Pikachu's uh, plus stat, then, if it's minus attack? Did you catch I, that? I did not catch that. I will keep an eye out. It's probably, like, hit points or something. Useless. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's timid? Ah, okay. Yeah, so speed, even more useless on Pikachu. Yeah, not the best nature. Okay, Iron uh, op yeah. uh, opting to take the heal here, uh, which actually does make sense with the minus attack. Um, if he didn't have minus attack, that would be that would probably be a very safe hit point range, but given that several, basically everything here except the Pidgeotto is likely a range... That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And there is a consider, at least from the EV side, a consideration here of uh, you don't want to use the super effective moves just to save a little bit of time. So you want to manage your headbutts. So if you can, you use headbutts, but then you need to save a couple eradicates later on. Um, so presumably, what Headstrong is going to do is just use headbutts and then bouncy bubble against. Um, you know, the fire type Pokemon and just make sure that by the time she exits the bridge, she still has four headbutts left. So that gives her two more to use after this. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that the source of maybe the only source of variance on this bridge is the Meowth fight, uh, where it might fake out for you, um, which we're seeing yep. from Meowth right now. Yep. So you might lose you know, a turn there or not. <laughs> has higher priority than Zippy's app, and this is something that has caused me no small degree of consternation. On the Pika side, it's honestly even more mindless outside of the one Sandshrew fight, um, where you you just go, uh, haha, Zippy Zap go burr. <laughs> uh, because of the way the route is structured and because of the way uh, the game is structured, we do have just enough Zippy Zaps to get us through uh, all the way to Route 10, uh, with like one or two left over depending on your ranges. Uh, if you have a really good attack stat, you can one-shot the coughing that Yaxo is about to fight mm. uh, from this rocket trainer here. Yeah, and that goes similarly for Eevee with the special attack as uh, you use the buzzy buzz against the coughing. But let's see if we get a, a fake out here for Headstrong. Things have been going pretty well for her, so I'm going to bet no fake out. I think she's going to have the plot armor. Let's mm -hmm. see. Oh! Runs over. I'm sorry. All right, pack it up, out. folks. We're going yeah. home. Time to reset. Um, no, but seriously, <laughs> um, just moving along. Uh, things are looking good for all of our runners, I think, other than just Iron still fighting against that that minus attack here, but beating up the poor Psyduck. <sighs> what did that Psyduck ever do to you, Pikachu? <laughs> Yeah, like, Iron is sh really showing off a lot of the safety strats that have been developed from it, this this tournament, both this year and last. Um, Yaxo, uh, ahead in the foot race right now, but down mm -hmm. on catch counts. Uh, we'll see how that uh, shakes out as things go on. Um, we're coming up on the easiest trainer skip oh, in this game. Yaxo! Oh, that's so painful. My heart. I mean, I, I, I've done that a few times too, for sure. Um, because the way you, you can't really see which way she's looking until you're like right against the hedge. So a lot of times runners will go above that hedge so you can see which way she's going. Because um, she can't look diagonally, of course. Um, mm. So a lot of runners will go above that hedge. Um, if you want to go below, you almost need to pause a second, and then you can see that she's facing that way. And then you go down, and this is just, oh, this is so frustrating. I'm sure Yaxo is kicking himself. Yeah, Yaxo showed up in chat, um, and... I'm cooked. <laughs> uh, um, Iron is also in chat confirming that the Pikachu is in fact timid. Okay. Good to know. But, I mean, there's still over two hours of run left, so a lot lot going on here. Indeed. Um, 
depending on how ru some runners feel, you can see people popping up to catch a Venonat if it spawns on this route. But that's like the only catch even worth yeah. thinking about. Uh, and headstrong, yep. uh, doing another version difference, not picking up the ether here, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to pick that up for for Evie at all. And she also, as we kind of mentioned, went above the hedge there just to totally avoid um, that last spinning around. And then you go into uh, this fight here and just electrocute the poor little Magikarp and uh, Krabby, I believe, is the other Pokemon. And then. Uh, move on to our, our good friend Bill. Okay, are any of these runners going to ditch Bill? Uh, there is an incentive for someone in one of these races to walk out, eat the time loss, and then come back and get a ditch Bill time on the boards. I think Headstrong should do it. So there's a sort of a meme category extension here. Um, so Bill is a presumably a person who turn himself into uh, a Nidorino and asks you to, you know, fix him, make him human again. And there's a I meme category. <laughs> there's a meme category where you talk to him, you say you'll fix him, and then you just leave him there to just like, you know, suffer an eternity as a Nidorino. And then time <laughs> stops when you exit uh, this here. Uh, and if you want a shorter category, it's only like 30 something minutes versus three hours. So, yeah, but like, honestly, like... I think it's a really good category if you look at, you know, this game and you're like, oh, my God, three hours is so long, mm -hmm. like either to get your feet wet and start learning this game, learning its intricacies and building up to the full any percent run mm -hmm. or, you know, honestly, I think people unironically just enjoy that run on its own. <laughs> It's all RNG. Like, I just, um, I, I mean, I'm, I run in that these days, but it's just like lotto attempts to an extreme. Um, but we see Iron catch the, the Venonat here, which is impressive because honestly, that's one of my nemesis in this game because it's so wobbly and jumps around and it's like, I usually just skip it. So uh, seeing Iron get the great there and catch the Venonat, very nice. Get that extra catch, pick up the ether, go around. Meanwhile, Headstrong sees the Squirtle run away and is going to see a little destroyed building. Uh, okay. Yox is already there, actually. Yeah, I gotta get used to Yoxo being a little ahead. Yeah. So, real question. Who's the better detective? Detective Pikachu or Detective Eevee? I mean, one of them has a movie <laughs> and one of them doesn't. So, I guess it's gotta be Pikachu, right? Sadly, I will admit that. But you, you I think know, he, fair. yeah, one's Ryan Reynolds and one is not. <laughs> uh, Yaxo uh, running down Route Five. Um, there are some uh, Nanab berries here, which stop Pokemon from jumping around on the screen that you can pick up for safety. I really like doing it, even though I know it's slow. Um, oh, yeah, but they're, they're so beneficial for um, yeah. Pokemon such as. Uh, like, I use one on Ghastly, for sure, uh, and sometimes Coughing as well. Zubat. Um, and Z Zubat is also a good candidate. Um, but a lot of times you get those berries just dropping from normal catches and fights and mm -hmm. stuff, so uh, I usually don't pick them up and just sort of pray <laughs> that I got one somewhere. <laughs> yeah. um, but having some, like, guaranteed can definitely help with a lot of the, the later catches where yeah. the Pokemon are just swinging side to side. And one of the interesting things about that cutscene is if you pick that Pokeball up, yeah, no, it's not in the cutscene anymore. They're, it's just playing over the game world as it exists. <laughs> All right, Yaxo going to find some, some buried treasure here. Finds a nugget in the hallway, which we're going to use for money later. And then not so hidden, also going to find the lure uh, on the left, which we'll use. Uh, for the next big catch portion, where there should be uh, some more variants introduced for our runners as they are uh, trying to get towards those 50 catches and gain experience. Chat, can I get a dog chant going? Because for our Pika runners, we really, really, really want to see a dog. Uh, Abra <laughs> works too, but Growlithe is going to be the next 
uh, buddy Pokemon we're going to be using throughout the next section of the run. So getting one of our uh, companions to help Pikachu deal with some of the trickier fights is going to be really important here. Oh, yeah. We can see why Headstrong kept the, the Bell Sprout here. Um, oh, Tabber ran into her. That's brutal. You don't want to catch the Rattata here. Or, yeah, you don't want to catch it here because it's not going to evolve. You want to wait a little bit. But um, keeping the Bell Sprout here allows her to have the two controllers for the catches. You can deposit it earlier and go one controller, um, trying to catch, you know, like a. a oh, there's an Abra. Trying to catch like a, a Pidgey or something easily, but uh, two controllers makes it much easier. The Nanab, also very good here, but she goes for it without it. Gets a nice shit stain. Nice. Yeah, the, uh, uh, we also saw a Psyduck on Headstrong screen. Nice. screen. We're going to be holding off on that until Route 17 as well, because, again, we want to catch Pokemon as close to leveling as possible, if not going over. Yeah, you can catch the Psyduck if you're really low on experience uh, for some reason, because you do want to be... A high enough level going onto the SSN for the fights there, uh, but experience is not a problem for her uh, at all. Sure. So I, I would be shocked if she caught the Psyduck here. Uh, but she does not get the Jigglypuff so, too, which is very nice. Not seeing a Growlithe or an Abra decides to go for the backup companion, Pidgeotto. Ooh. Oh yeah, and as, as pointed out by Sandy, yeah, Headstrong does have a um, a rat from very, very early on, uh, about <laughs> 35 minutes ago. So yeah, that's another reason not to catch it, and presumably she'll catch just Eradicate later. Um, and then she splits the trainers there, splitting their vision right down the middle, which is a very, I will say, maybe the trickiest part of this run. So hopefully the other two runners can get that as well. And then she's going to go in here and sell some stuff to get some money. And then we're going to buy a slew of items, uh, a bunch of great balls, uh, as well as um, some like X attacks, special attacks, things of that nature to make the upcoming fights much easier. Yeah, this shopping segment's going to carry us through basically the next hour of game. Mm -hmm. And hopefully no one messes it up like I did on my run, and they don't have to go back. That yeah. would be great. And the Yaxo, oh, oh that, it's tricky. It, it's a very tough split. It, I mean, personally, I still hit it sometimes, and I've practiced it a lot. There's a couple pixels you need to just look at and line up for, and a little left, little right is it, it, pretty frustrating. Um, I mean, on the plus side, each trainer just has one Pokemon, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I mean, um, they're both very straightforward to deal with. Uh, Headbutt mm -hmm. from Pikachu will take care of both of them, or two, depending on your stats. Uh, Iron does get a dog right away, so that's... Oh, really it wasn't a... I don't them. know, hopefully, hopefully it stays. It should, right? No, because it oh, wasn't even oh, like a nice or anything. It was a, yeah. All right, there we go. <laughs> Excellent, should be good. Should be. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Headstrong making her way onto the SSN as Iron gets the Growlithe on the second attempt and Yaxo goes into the shopping menu. The menu is slightly different between Pikachu and Eevee in the specifics, but the intent is the same. We're buying a bunch of uh, great balls and lures and some healing items and a bunch of X items to get us through this mid game. Yeah, Iron getting the Jigglypuff too, which was glowing, right? So that should be some good experience. Mm -hmm. It's a huge Jigglypuff. Oh, it is right to go for the YOLO throw there so it doesn't float away. Um, just bad luck with the Jigglypuff attacking. Yeah, that's I was mentioning okay. earlier, you know, different Pokemon do have some slightly different attack patterns they could go for. And that's another bit of variance because that removes the first ball experience bonus that Iron would have got otherwise. So Headstrong's going to fight the rival on the boat, and uh, this is why you generally need extra levels on the Eevee, because if your Eevee is not fast enough, uh, the Pidgeotto will one-shot your Bellsprout, um, which 
doesn't throw the fight by any means. It just costs time because you have to put a new Pokemon in that slot. Uh, but fortunately, being level 19, um, have enough speed, well, level 20 now, uh, that don't have to worry about that. So uh, she's just cruising along with this this route here. Um, Yakso is on the ship as well, going to be going into the same fight. Uh, I believe because Yakso only has the Pidgeotto, that will be uh, his choice of companion. Uh, luckily, Pikachu's side does not have to worry about a Pikachu shocking the bird. <laughs> All right, let's see if Iron can split the trainers. I think he's a little too far left. Oh no, no, don't move! Don't... Yes, okay. <laughs> a few, a few adjustments there. Almost gave me a heart attack. Like had it, didn't have it. Had it, didn't. <laughs> like oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad he got it. And Yaxo starting the rival fight, it's relatively straightforward, uh, both because we don't have a grass type for Pidgeot to, or Pidgeotto, excuse me, uh, to one shot, but also uh, Zibizap. It's really fast, and we'll one shot this bird. And Headstrong's Abra is evolving, so looking pretty good on catch count here. Iron picking up the buy menus here, getting the repels and all those things. Um, so they do buy the repel, which is interesting because on Route 10, we want to do a lot of catches, and sometimes just Pokemon you want don't show up. Uh, so you generally buy one repel just for that purpose, because then you can repel and then lure again and get a fresh set of Pokemon. Out oh, 10 might be hated some days. <laughs> I think it's one of my favorite because all, none of the catches are too hard. And it's kind of fun. Um, but it's definitely killed some runs with just Pokemon not showing up. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe it's worse on Pika than on Eevee. But... Well, on, on the Pika side, you need like hard required to get oh, yeah, those you, to show up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Eevee, you, you like to see the Nittos, and if you get a second Moonstone, they're a good category for um, using the second Moonstone on them. You can also use it on Clefairy if you want. Um, but the first moon Moonstone for Eevee version goes to the Jigglypuff, uh, because it does not learn a move when it levels up. But of course, the Pika version is different, right? Yep. Our first Moonstone is locked into whichever Nidoran friend we are going to be using to get us through the Pokemon Tower. And then the second one goes to Jigglypuff for the reasons you mentioned. I believe Nitto King's better, right, than Nitto Queen? Uh, Nitto King, on the whole, is better. There are some moments where uh, Nitto Queen has an advantage, but you typically want to see the Nitto King, and mm. specifically, you want to make sure that you catch the Nidoran male. Uh, because if you catch Nidorino, it doesn't know Poison Jab, which is uh, the move of choice. Yeah. Good tip for Pika runners out there. Um, and we'll see. Uh, Headstrong just did it, but going back through this trainer split uh, is not as bad as going down. Um, for uh, Yaxo, it's got a little leeway on one side where the trainer was. Is but <laughs> just a little. Uh, but what you can do is you can... Oh, he's popping the lure again. Uh, is that normal? Um, or is it because he really needs the, the Growlithe? I think... Uh, so he should be good oh. for the next section with the Pidgeotto. I think he just really wants the Growlithe. Mm. Um, because the default strats assume you have it. Or mm. the Abra. Uh, he might also be... Oh, hi, Chansey! Oof. Was it? No, it's a... Oh, no, on Headstrong's the... side. Oh, I was thinking of Yaxo. He might not be familiar is. with backup strats for not having the Growlithe here. Um, I don't think those are in any of the major note documents. Gotcha. Well, now the Growlithe shows up finally, so back on track, which is nice. Yep, yep. Uh, Headstrong doing a nice little menu here, so what we do in the Eevee version is we evolve Jigglypuff, uh, and then we do a bunch of deposits, uh, get rid of any Pokemon that we don't need, so in this case it's Kadabra and Wigglytuff, and then she'll probably pop the lure here as well, because we're already in the menu, and then we're going to have an Eevee mirror match. 
Let's go. <laughs> Hi, you I said the name of the game? <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, so Iron finishing up SSN as well. And let's see. So for this E.D. Mirror match, oh, she didn't buy the, uh, or did I just miss it that she used the, um, what's it called that prevents the status effect? Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, the guard spec. Yeah, I, the guard spec. I, I assume it. she bought it and used it and I just missed it. But yeah, use a guard spec there. Otherwise you can get a uh, status effect and make this fight rough. So we also buy that too. Uh, and then it's a pretty straightforward fight. Though the upcoming Raticate fight normally is a little challenging, but given that her attack is so high on the EV, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then on the Pika side, we two controller both of these fights, the one Headstrong just finished and the one she's about to go to. Uh, we just pray not to miss our ranges if our dog has slightly low special attack. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, so for Headstrong here, uh, it's Sandshrew, so it'll be Bouncy Bubble, uh, which will uh, heal us up. Because, uh, yeah, we get up to full health. And then the Raticate that shows up here, uh, if you don't have very high attack, you generally will paralyze it and then use two headbutts. But um, I'm sure she knows what the attack is on her EV, and I assume it's a good enough range to just use two headbutts here. And I think she'll still get it. Oh no! Oh, her attack was a little too low. Oh no! See, so yeah, so it's it's definitely a range. She had to heal because Eradicate could have killed over there. That's a tough, tough break. Still fine, um, but yeah, that was that was tough. And then we're not going to learn any moves with Eevee until we get to twenty-eight. If we get to twenty-eight, uh, where we'll learn Double Edge. Just gonna go through here, dodge a couple trainers, and then a nice little catch route uh, for Headstrong again. So the Pokemon that we want here for the Eevee version is we want Nidoran male, Nidoran female, Hero, um, Krabby is nice. If you see a Chansey, you can catch it if you want. Um, and then Rattata if you didn't get it, but she already has one, so she'll probably be looking for Eradicate. Um, I don't know if she'll be waiting around for them, I think her catch count's like okay, it's it's good, not great, uh, but her experience is very high, so she might pop the Repel and Lure again if uh, the Pokemon don't show up that she wants. But we'll have to see, because only four Pokemon show up in this patch of grass at one time. So generally what you do is you wait for four to show up, and then you see what you got, and then you start catching, and then if four bad ones show up, you pop the Repel. Um, but luckily, we have Nidoran female here that was glowing, and I saw a Krabby on her screen, so things are looking pretty good. And then Yaxo and Iron powering through this fight here. Psyduck goes to level 18. Gonna keep the old moves here for Yaxo. And then Iron is running along. I'm gonna take this fight as well. So actually, it looks like Yaxo and Iron are very, very close to each other. One catch count difference, which, as we all know, is 30 seconds um but yeah headstrong looking really good i mean even if this wasn't a, a race per se um i think this would be a very very good run um just you know going towards a pb pace but there's still a lot and still about two hours left so anything can happen you also has to wait because if that girl trainer looking to the right catches you that's a big time waste there and luckily, finds the Nidoran male. So, looking good for Yaxo there. We'll be able to have the Nido King. Wait, is that a Nidoran male or is that a Nidorino? It, I'm sorry that the, the screen's a little blurry there. Um, no, it was the Nidoran male. Okay, we're good. Yeah, po apologies. I was. I am also doing. Oh, it was today, also so. a rhetorical question, so anyway. But. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do have the Nidoran mail for Yaxos, so that's very good news. Headstrong just moving on, not waiting for Pokemon. So 
she caught a, I believe, a Spiro, a Krabby, and a Nidoran female. I was watching the other screens, but I think she just did that and, and moved on to fight uh, this other Raticate, which is much easier. But this taking this fight does reset the Pokemon, so she could walk back up and then see if more Pokemon spawn there as well. Yeah, Lorelai casually dropping in on her life. Just saying hi. Flexing with her Lapras. Meanwhile, Iron and Yaxo going through the catch gauntlet here of Route 10. Getting the level ups for uh, both of them, so there's going to be quite a few evolutions we get to sit through here and watch that animation. Oddish evolving, Pidgey will evolve for Iron. And it'll be interesting to see if Headstrong just goes straight into Rock Tunnel or if she turns around to try to get another catch or two. Ooh, she's going for it. Okay. So Rock Tunnel's a, a <laughs> quote fun. Uh section of the run. Oh my gosh, I... she finds a Charmander. Rare spawn right off Let's the bat. go. This is a very, very rare spawn. Um, and an excellent... I don't even think it's a guaranteed catch with the berry and the two. I think it's still like... I mean, I hope she gets it, but yeah. So that's actually really nice too, because then it'll evolve in one level. That's basically a bonus catch. Uh, because what we're looking for here is, uh, we're looking for Graveler, we're looking for Rhyhorn, um, because Rhyhorn would be the mount Pokemon for Eevee. And then we're also looking for Zubat, because that evolves in one level. Uh, we kind of hope for a Cubone and a Machop. They take four levels to level up, but uh, we do like to see those. Um, so I, I honestly, like in this, this, I thought it was a, a Cubone she saw. I was surprised to see a Charmander. Um, yeah, and especially because, you know, we've got this dark filter over everything. Like, the small Pokemon, usually it's Cubone. Yep. Apparently it was Charmander. Uh, but... So it know, is hard can... to see in here, which does make it tough to sometimes see where the trainers are looking, if they're spinning around, and, and things of that nature. Um, a lot of times Iron I put my face catch? right next to the TV. <laughs> like, that is a pile of experience for him. Uh, gonna get the Oddish to evolve into Gloom. Gonna get that Krabby halfway up. Uh, Yaxo finished up, hanging out with Lorelei, and is going back to the route. Oh, Chinsy! <gasps> no! Oh, go for it, go for it, do it, do it, do it! Oh, no! Okay, getting... I mean, he's still might, first. right? Getting the bird yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. You wanna yeah. get the E, cause it's not glowing. True. True, true, true. Good catch, good catch on the bird. <gasps> okay, chat saying don't go for it. Let's see what Yaxo wants to do. You know, uh, I I do agree that there is a certain degree of risk here. However, it, yeah, it would be hype. I know. I mean, a better run or more excitement for the chat, which is more important. Clearly, having a better run is important. So here we are. Uh, Maybe he'll do the. Oh, was looking gonna for repel. an additional spawn, but now going to repel the Chansey away. Wow. Well. Oh my gosh, what a terrible, terrible two heroes. Yeah. Good to see uh, that. And additionally, like, you don't have to use the repel. You can What's also use for? the Lorelei fight to despawn and respawn this route. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have that extra bit of backup. But now that Yoxo's gone through both of them... Um, at a certain point, you just have what to, like, either repeatedly run into Furos and run away so they despawn, or just call it a day. Uh, Iron does get a Nidoran female. Didn't he have a Nidoran male, though? Or am I hallucinating? Uh, I think y Yaxo got the, uh, the Nidoran male. Iron apparently hasn't seen a Nido yet. Okay. Yeah, Let yeah. me double check that. So, uh, I was tracker. just wondering what Yaxo was waiting around for. Uh, I'm I mean, not it might sure. Have been female. Uh, looking at the tracker, yeah, Nidoran females marked. Um, might have just been the Nidoran. 
better safe to get enough catches going into late game so you're not like stressing trying to catch a magmar or a ditto in the mansion which is not anything i would wish on anybody but does happen sometimes <laughs> My metric um, for determining whether or not I'm on a good let's go catch count is whether or not I need to catch Tentacool. Mm, tentacle is a frustrating one. Uh, we'll talk about that more when we get to that point, but the catches while you're on the water and surfing are not particularly fun. But Headstrong got a, a Rhyhorn right away too, so she is she's on a roll here. So then you have to mount Pokemon for your... Oh, she tried to turn around for something and ran into another Rhyhorn. Yeah. Like... What is, oh, uh, that Graveler there. One which of the is on I top of a Geodude she's trying to avoid. <laughs> that, that gold app almost grabbed her. Yeah. When it gold comes to rock tunnel, my, my personal line of thinking, and I don't know how common this is, but like, just the sooner I can get my catches over with, the better. Mm -hmm. Just so I don't have to worry about it when I'm on that last screen and like doing laps right there by the exit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And are these fights pretty straightforward for Pika? Like Yaxo? I mean, it seems so, you one shot this slowpoke. Oh, yeah, you one shot this slowpoke. I think there's it's like a rage if you're super under leveled and uh, have minus special attack. But, like, it's not a concern. Uh, the Kangaskhan Trainer uh, can be a little scary, uh, depending on what your hit points are at going into it. But then you... Uh, two Controller, the the Hiker... Uh, what's her name who gives you the Ultra Balls? You can either one controller or two controller, and then you just zippy zap the last fight, and that's not even a worry. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, Eevee, you have to... Use a lot of X attacks, X special attacks, etc. But and then you have to monitor yeah. your hit points quite a bit, just to make sure you don't get critted by the Machop and killed or something like that. But generally, it's pretty manageable. Yeah, you are using a few X items here and there throughout, but for the most part, uh, you, unless your stats are bad or you're going for some risky strats, uh. Rock Tunnel is very safe. Um, you typically one controller this Kangaskhan fight, uh, mostly just because uh, you can use the fake out turn to set up. Yuxo, or not Yuxo, Iron go for the Zoo Bat. Let's pray that it stays in. One of the most annoying catches. Come on. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Love to see that. Yeah, and Yaxa just caught him a chop, so that's good. Uh, it'll take four levels to level up, but still a good catch. And it can be used for, at least an Eevee, for niche strategies later in the run um, for fighting a couple of the, the trainers, but probably not in Pika. Um, but, oh, Headstrong finds Zubat. I think she might have caught everything she needs. But she might want a couple other other Pokemon. And this Zubat being a real pain, but there she goes. She gets the nice. That should catch it. And we're good. Yaxo getting the Graveler, uh, which is a great catch because it gives so much experience to your party. Using the Raspberry to... I don't know if it guarantees the catch, but it makes it very, very high probability with an excellent... But Yaxo, not excellent. Let's pray it stays in. No. Tough. All right, there's an excellent. And we're good. Okay, we got our grappler. Iron got a full party with a lot of levels going on there. The Nidoran's will evolve. Um, Krabby's, evol Krabby's evolving already? Wait, did he get a mega size uh, Pokemon somewhere? Because Krabby takes four levels to evolve. <laughs> yeah, I remember Iron was on uh, what was two levels up on that Krabby before leaving Route 10. Jeez. Well, yeah. that's good news. Then you can get it out of your party sooner. So, that's good news for Iron. 
And that's especially good news for Iron because of the minus attack on the Pikachu. Getting all that extra XP is going to really help out because mm -hmm. this is the point where if you have low stats and are under leveled, you're going to start falling off a little bit going into the Rocket Hideout and the Pokemon Tower. Yeah, the over leveling helps a lot. Probably through a little bit after this, this segment, but then eventually it gets to a point where the difference between like level 28 and 29 is not super significant, or level 26 and 27, you know? Um, versus early game, being two or three levels higher is, is quite a huge swing. Um, but hopefully can keep up the, the pace here and at least be a little bit over level to compensate for that minus attack. Um, here Eevee's just beating up on the poor little Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn was just minding its own business. And then Eevee just comes through and terrorizes it. Um, but Headstrong's on to the next screen. Yaxo's Nidorino is evolving. So, moving right along, I assume this is where it's you just evolve it to Nidoking as soon as you can, presumably. Yep. Uh, you know, Nidoking, unless you catch uh, Nidorino directly, uh, you don't need to teach Thrash, which is the evolution move for Nidoking. Um, but the extra stats are just really useful. So we got dual Nitto Kings. Actually, Iron and Yaxo are so close here. This is like a real race for real. Same catch count. Bolt just got their Nitto King. Like, this Hello, is a very good race. Hello, calling for Iron. Potentially. Ooh. And Headstrong just rolling through. Yep. And then Getting I believe that there's scary trainer pass. One more screen here. And one then she'll screen, be out of rock tunnel, and then we'll then we'll be able to see again. Then it will be nice and bright. I miss the sun. <laughs> yeah, so for this last fight here, uh, it's going to be a X special attack, and then bouncy bubble, which will. Heal up Eevee quite nicely before proceeding into uh, the next segment where we're going to have to fight uh, the rival yet again. So that's a benefit of having Bouncy Bubble on Eevee is you can avoid a lot of heals uh, because you uh, heal up as you use that move on other Pokemon. Yep. And Whereas Pika tends to do HP management by uh, trying to avoid taking damage whatsoever. <laughs> All right, Headstrong's out of Rock Tunnel at 116, which is a great pace with 32 catches, which I would say is a little bit above uh, what you would hope for. So, and I believe that can pro pretty much be attributed to uh, the Charmander catch up quite a bit there. Uh, also, the Bulbasaur and Ivysaur. So, those are two actual great like other catches. She can get the Squirtle for the Trifecta, but, you know, Bulbasaur, Charmander, easy evolutions there. It's an easy four extra Pokemon, which would give her a lot of uh, leeway mm -hmm. later on in the run. And then we have Yaxo and Iron, who uh, both are fairly neck and neck. Iron up two catches, but a little further behind in the foot race, uh, fighting the trainer that Yaxo just finished up. Um, both with also very respectable catch counts as they took a little bit of extra time on Route 10 to make sure they had all the catches they needed there. Um, and it looks like Yatsu doesn't have a Nidor uh, Rhyhorn yet. No, I don't think, I don't think he does. And there he is in chat confirming my suspicions. <laughs> That's one of the most frustrating parts of this run is if you, uh, are on a good pace for a PB. I've had dozen or so runs that are just super, super good, and then you don't get a Rhyhorn. Um, and then you can finish the run, and it, but it probably costs you in walking time, I would guess about a minute, um, which is yeah. a pretty significant chunk of time. It is a little bit better for Pika runners mm -hmm. uh, because we uh, are already planning on getting the Arcanine 
to use as a right Pokemon right, right. here. Hi, Let's catch Onyx. Onyx. Catch it. It's glowing. Let's do it. It spawned Let's on do top it. of He's you. going for it. Yo. Let's Yo. go. Let's go. Come on. Okay. okay. It's great. All that diploma and AOP experience coming in handy here. Please, Mrs. Yes. Yes. Iron is see how much experience this is. The glowing onyx. Oh, okay. It wasn't as much experience as I yeah. thought it would be. Imagine if it had been supersized. <laughs> Fortunately, not penalized too much by like, you know, early on, if you get tons of extra levels on your bugs or something, but awesome. I would have definitely not gone for that, but props yeah. to iron. That is, that is an awesome catch there. Yeah, I am well doing done. an incredible job of playing around the minus attack on the Pikachu by really focusing on getting as many levels as possible. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Oh, freaking Machop jumping around. Look, Machop, I understand you have to do your jumping jacks, you know, you never want to skip leg day, but like, come on! Oh, speaking of which, Headstrong is actually going for the sort of niche um, chop strategy. So swap my chop to uh, slot two in the party. Usually you have Rhyhorn in slot two, but putting my chop in slot two can help with basically just one of the upcoming fights. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see when it comes to that. But um, interesting strategy. It does make it a little safer. Um, Otherwise, you just use Rhyhorn in your second slot for, for quite a while. Yeah, I am unfamiliar with a lot of the uh, newest bits of Eevee Cooks. Um, I think this was about the time that people realized that, hey, yeah, actually Rhyhorn's a pretty good Pokemon, especially on the Pika side. Uh, so we started using it for things like the upcoming Jesse and James fight. Mm -hmm. Save, uh, save Pika Runners from having to go into the box and finding a Cliff Fairy to sacrifice, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Headstrong... Her Eevee is strong, but only level 26, which I'm kind of surprised. I think it's because a lot of her catches were great and not excellent, um, which I noticed, which... I didn't want to really highlight because I thought it might have been a little bit intentional not to overlevel some Pokemon, but um, yeah, a lot of the catches were great and not excellent, and that's going to make it maybe where Eevee won't even learn Double Edge, um, mm -hmm. which is learned at level 28, and when you get Double Edge, that makes uh, the run a bit faster because, of course, it's a much stronger move and you can start one-shotting Pokemon um, versus having to use alternative strategies. So did I gonna be close but i don't know if she'll get 28 um which will be much i think it's a little bit safer because double edge does have some risk and you know hurting yourself and you do have to manage your health a little bit more carefully but um yeah i don't expect double edge is gonna come into the picture here which is kind of surprising given how the early game went yeah though it might be intentional on her part, like you were saying, because sometimes you just want to throw the ball rather than really wait and line up for the excellent, uh, making sure that you get the catch uh, quickly could be more important in her mind than ensuring she really gets all of the experience she possibly can. And I have to yeah. imagine an experienced runner like her is very confident with slightly lower level EV strats. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in Eevee, what we do here is you also learn Glitzy Glow, um, replacing Buzzy Buzz, which will be uh, useful for some of our upcoming fights. And then we also set the nature for upcoming Pokemon because we are going to want the Starmie we eventually catch to have plus special attack. So that's what she's doing there, paying 10,000 Pokebucks or whatever they're called. Sorry, I don't know that, but paying 10,000 to set the nature of any Pokemon caught later on, uh, which will be very useful for our Starmie. Yeah, not only does it ensure that our Starmie has the best possible nature, it's just like an extra bit of variance that gets taken out of the equation. You think about, you know, so many Pokemon speed runs and you like have to do all these calculations based off of, okay, what? how many IVs do you have and what's your nature? 
But knowing that it's modest, just like knowing that our starters' I IVs are always 31, makes it a lot easier to just not have to worry about an extra variable in how good your star is. Yeah, especially if you think of this game sort of like a randomizer, as we kind of mentioned earlier. Anything you can take out from the variance is helpful, especially, you know, over an hour, almost two hours into a run, you don't want to leave it to chance or you want to eliminate as many uh, potential pitfalls as you can after investing about two hours of your time. Indeed. Zubat again showing why it's the worst Pokemon is because in addition to being annoying to catch, it learns a move, then it evolves, and then it learns another move. But it's still faster than some of the alternatives. <laughs> yep. Headstrong in the Pokemon Center as Yaxo is through the rival fight that Iron is just about to start. Um... Yaxo and Headstrong being tight on catch count, while Iron does have three on both of them at the moment. There's about a minute and a half of leeway. Confirmed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so after this fight, we didn't mention, but what you do is, like, what is going to do here is uh, you heal if needed, and then you pop the escape rope to get out. And then we move on, and then we come back to this, of course, later. Uh, after we're able to see all the ghosts that are floating around. Uh, meanwhile, Headstrong is powering through and, and fighting this Hypnos, and uh, this is the point where she just hit level 27. Um, if she hit 28, it's worth learning Double Edge here, but after this fight, there's no point in learning Double Edge for your Eevee. It's faster to just keep Headbutt. Um, so this is sort of the cutoff right here at this trainer. Yeah. Whereas on the Pika side, all we're really worried about at this point is Nido King's attack stat until we get to the Jesse and James fight. Uh, but luckily, the Jesse and James fight will be using Rhyhorn to carry, but we've routed that out so that even the worst Rhyhorn can get through just fine. Alright, what's the Cliff Fairy going to do for Yoxo? Or is it not an issue with the Nido King? Nothing, it dies to poison chat. <laughs> Just right away. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Maybe Pika has a few advantages over Eevee. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep saying. <laughs> the Church of Pikachu preaching the gospel. Um so Headstrong moving on and then uh got one more Pokemon here, the Voltorb. She's playing it very safe with two controller strats here. Um, you can definitely do this with just EV, but I think she probably realizes she's in a somewhat comfortable lead. Ooh, doesn't one-shot there. Um, and can just play it safe with two controllers when needed. Just... Yeah, so stopping in the cut area on the route out of Lavender Town, picking up a Firestone that we'll use to get Arcanine in a little bit. And basically, we'll just ride the Arcanine through Celadon City until we find Ponyta. It's kind of silly, but Pikachu now uh, upgrades Ride Pokemon three different times. Very easily taking care of that that fight there on Eevee um, with Glitzy Glow and playing it safe, just using the X special attack. Um, and then here's a fun part of the run that I almost wish there was more of, where you're just going to control Eevee for, I don't know, about 10 or 15 seconds and run through the, the air vent and then across the pipe to go get the Pokeball. And I wish there was a little bit more of that in the run because it's kind of fun controlling the Eevee or the Pikachu and, and running so, around. But take, in, yeah. I always get frustrated with any game that has like the a little segment like this where it's got a really cool idea that just never comes up again. It's like, you are onto something running mm. around as your partner Pokemon. You know, you're supposed to be a team. Why is this literally the only time? <laughs> 
There could have been so many more applications for this. Yeah, Matt, uh, hear me out on this one. Imagine uh, in Silphco, you have to send your Pokemon partner through a teleporter maze in order to find uh, mm. the key card. That would be fun, right? And a bit right? different using this mechanic, but nope, this is about it. And then Eevee's back, and now we just uh, keep going. Right? Yeah, so she's going to swap Rhyhorn back to slot 2, because Rhyhorn is a lot more tanky for the upcoming fight. She's going to backtrack through here, pick up a rare candy, I assume. Yep. And then going to go all the way back around and uh, proceed to the Jesse and James fight. Uh, meanwhile, Iron is setting the nature himself. About to go into a uh, hideout as well. And Yoxa is right between those two. Yeah. Yeah, on the Hypno fight... Um, I'm assuming we have a slight spoiler in chat about what this Hypno is about to do. <sighs> oh, sleepy. Oh, oh, Chad is cooking. The vent segment was a teaser for the Synchro Machine in Scarlet Violet. Oh. Ah. All right, all right. <laughs> I accept that. We're on to something. Okay, so Headstrong's running into Jesse James' fight. These next couple Team Rocket fights are just a real pain, and the notes for this literally say, do not get unlucky, I believe, um, as written by Echi himself. Um, because you can get paralyzed, you can get poisoned, you can get critted, you can just, a lot of things can go wrong. Um, if they just beat up on Eevee a lot, so let's let's see how it goes here. Yeah, simply don't die. It's just yeah, that easy. Just don't get unlucky. Um, so there is a, a strategy where you rely on Eevee using Glitzy Glow, but he opts for using Rhyhorn with Drill Run to one shot. But Eevee is poisoned, barely survives. This is what I'm talking about. Don't get unlucky. Okay, Glitzy Glow and then Drill Run. Yeah, it should be fine. Eevee's down! She, she must have done that on purpose. Maybe? Hmm. Okay, okay, so I think the logic is she would have had to heal after the fight anyway, because you need both Pokemon to be at least about 60 hit points and not poisoned. So because Eevee was so low and poisoned, probably would have had to heal anyway. So I assume she calculated that it would probably just be faster just to finish the fight, get out, heal, and revive that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I assume that's the logic there, which yeah. totally checks out. Could have also been fishing for the crit just to, like, mm. if you if you get the crit one shot, you don't have to worry about it that way. Anyway, either way, you're out in one round. Um, on the Yoxo side, we're on the Grimer, uh, going with the Nino King and Pikachu. Uh, strat here. Uh, and now we've got Snake Pika. <laughs> I hope the bosses don't hear that. So, uh, this wheezing fight is very uh, straightforward for Eevee here. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to worry about that too much, but the upcoming fight against Giovanni is... A little tricky. It should be fine because Eevee's not minus defense, um, but we'll look at it in a second. Um, meanwhile, let's watch Pika run through the air vents. Uh, Iron mentioning that his Nidoking King is also minus attack. See, I'm just going to hope that this is the game storing up luck for a god star. <laughs> yeah, that's where it'll get really interesting because other than very small differences, right, it's the same throughout the end, other than I guess the rivals Pokemon um, once they get the Starmie. Yeah. Um, and then based on just what their stats are and everything, which is pretty much luck of the draw, and we'll explain that a little more later when they get to that point, but you know, um, Iron Yoxo could get really, really good Starmies and Knock on wood, Headstrong might not have a great one. Hopefully she does. Um, yeah. 
and that might even out the race quite a bit. And then Starmie might one-shot everything, and then um, for Yaxo, for example, maybe not for Headstrong, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, could see some pump action going if the stars are aligned. So this Persian say. fight is... Uh, <laughs> Persian hits pretty hard, and if you're minus attack, this can be very dangerous. Um, so you start off by pump buffing your X attack, because... You know, that helps during the fake out turn and then it's sizzly slide uh, to reduce the damage you'll take from a crit that's pretty hard hit uh but at 30 hit points i assume she won't heal yep uh if she had ooh, if she had minus defense there she would have had to heal because that slash would have killed her but uh, she knows the numbers she's played this run uh plenty of times and knew that wouldn't ko and then the right horn is an easy one shot here as well uh, but yep. that persian fight can be very scary if you have minus defense on your EV. Yeah, when the Pika fight gets there, um, I'll show you how it's done. But in the meantime, Yaxo is about to start the rocket fight. Uh, we'll see you, uh, what the lineup here is. Um, I missed if he did any party menuing. But that is Rhyhorn Nitto King. Okay, this is the modern standard fight. Uh, we're going to drill run our way through these and use Nitto King here as the support. Is it normal not to, to one shot the Arbok there? It, or it is unfortunately range. common, um, especially if you don't have a lot of levels on the Rhyhorn. Mm. Granted, the fact that you can one-shot is an improvement over the older fight, where uh, both the Arbok and Weezing are almost always a two-shot for Pikachu. Uh, so Headstrong's learning Fly here, which allows us to use the town map to fly between places we've been, so that's very useful in general, but of course for speedrunning as well, because this uh, starts to open the door for us to go around and pick up different stuff, eventually go through and get all the badges we've been skipping for the last hour or so. Uh, but first, we need to go back to the tower here and uh, see the ghosts. And Headstrong is going to be looking for a Ghastly here. Um, you can see a Cubone here, which is technically better than seeing one in Rock Tunnel because it only takes one level to evolve, but uh, I believe she already has a Cubone. So she'll probably just be looking for Ghastly, and that's it, uh, as she moves through the tower here. And aren't the odds of Tower Cubone just, like, really low, even accounting for the fact that no Pokemon ever spawned in Pokemon Tower? <laughs> yeah, they're definitely low. Um, honestly, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I saw a Chansey in here one time. Like, as a super rare spawn. Like, it was a Chansey or something like that, and it's gotta be, like, a 1% or something. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> uh, so over on Yaxo's side, we are seeing uh, the Archer 1 fight, uh, going for fairly standard strats at Special Attack Thunderbolt, and then you press Thunderbolt two more times, use the Nidoking King to heal up, and this fight is relatively straightforward. Uh, over on Ironside, we see Rhyhorn almost getting the one shot on the Arbok. Ooh, so close, yeah. Literal one. Uh, but this fight is going very straightforwardly. Uh, doing the bog standard strats here of going for the helping hand. We'll see how this does damage wise. And there we go! <laughs> Oh, oh no! Oh. I missed what happened on uh, Yaxo's side. Oh, I was watching the EV feed too. Um. Uh, I somehow Pikachu died. What? Ah. Okay. Uh, Sandy in chat is saying that Pikachu might be brave, so it doesn't outspeed the the Golbat, which ooh, that's tough. Not something I had considered.
Oh, the ghastly pops up for Headstrong right before the cutscene. Classic! Right as you're That's stepping my into video it. Video game. Every time. Every single time. But this is a nice little cutscene where Cubone sees and is reunited with his ghost mom or something like that. But unfortunately, I think Headstrong is going to skip it. Honestly? We I had time seen. to watch it. I literally have never seen the cutscene. <laughs> It's pretty great. <laughs> like I only picked up this run to speed run. It picked up this game to speed run it. I've never actually gone through and not skipped the cutscenes. I should do that sometime. Ooh, so Ghastly is not on the agenda for Headstrong because I don't think she caught one um, while we were watching the other peak with peak runners. Mm -hmm. um, so this is interesting because. Now, what you typically do is you would put, after this fight, you would put Ghastly in slot one because you are going to fight Snorlax and you want the fast Pokemon so you can flee. Um, but because there's no Ghastly, she's going to have to keep Eevee in her party, which might mean Eevee gains extra levels, which might mean Eevee learns Helping Hand, which also just wastes time, let alone you didn't catch Ghastly for your Pokedex. So. Kind of, kind of tough there. Not a, not a big thing, but if you're going for like a PB or world record, it is something that's pretty frustrating. Yeah, then uh, we've got Duel League Giovanni fights going on. Um, this is actually a, a really simple fight. Uh, you uh, basically just assume you're going to get faked out turn one, so you double X attack the Pikachu. Ra turn two, you X attack Pikachu. Uh, with Ditto King and go for Zippy Zap to outspeed anything that Persian might throw out. And then you do the most powerful move that one can imagine in Pokemon. Plus six helping hand double kick into the rival. Nice. <laughs> Sounds pretty beastly. Indeed. Let's uh, see it. It does look like things are going a little bit off the rails for Yapso. Uh, but he does get through the Giovanni fight in one piece. And still just for pace is ahead of, uh, is ahead of Iron here, right? Mm -hmm. Very close between these two runners. I mean, I think they're just like a, a good Starmie and like a Koga Gym couple protects away from each other at this point. Yeah, and maybe a missed bump or two uh, for good oh. measure. <laughs> Let's pray that no hydro pumps miss this run. Indeed, because that that happens. Um, so check, Headstrong checked our no. runners catch route in a minute. Um, I think Headstrong picked up the Ultra Balls in the tower. We'll see if either of our Pika runners are going to pick up the five pack of Ultra Balls here in the hideout. They're a little bit out of the way, but if you need the extra insurance, they are a good pickup. Yeah, I would say maybe Headstrong, um, this is based on experience and stuff, maybe Headstrong needs them. Yaxo, again, with 33 catches for both of them, like they got to still catch some stuff. So getting those extra ultra balls would definitely help uh, as they go throughout the run whereas iron i don't think with 36 catches necessarily would need them um because you already have a few right in your inventory yeah like you if uh you could look at me right now and a hypothetical you uh could look at me right now and say ah yes i know i will first try catch every single pokemon <laughs> uh left on my catch tracker uh, that I go for, then yeah, no, the just getting the Ultra Balls in the tower is enough almost 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when you start looking at like, okay, I need to catch six or seven more things, yeah. I start going, maybe I need the extra couple of Pokeballs. Yeah, absolutely. Um... So headstrong at the Snorlax, which uh, we don't actually catch here. We just uh, we just flee and get yeah, away safely. If that Snorlax was just a regular catch, uh, it would be fine. It would be free. Probably not. I don't know what its catch rate is, but it would be just like right there along the way. 
but it is our introduction to sort of the overworld rare spawns, you know, the same mechanics we see with the various legendaries, where you have to do a battle against it before you get the opportunity to catch it. That just takes too long. Let's just run away. So Headstrong moving on to the almost last catch area. And she, the Pokemon she's really... Oh, yeah, she didn't catch Pidgey earlier. She saved the Pidgey for here, so actually it'll level up twice, and then you get Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, um, which is very, very nice for her. Um, yep. So she was definitely looking for that. Um, I can't see the, the catch ca tracker for them. But, um, and then definitely looking for Ponita to get Rapidash for a much faster mount. And then definitely looking for Doduo, which will evolve into Dodrio. Probably looking for Psyduck as well. Oh, and there's a go duo for Yeah. Pulling up Headstrong's catch tracker, uh, she's got four catches Psyduck, Ponyta, uh, Coughing, Doduo, and Starby marked. Um, does not have Tentacool marked right now, so if uh, Route 17 is a little rude, if the ducks don't show up, uh, she does have that back up in her pocket. Yeah, hoping we don't have to get to a tentacool catch, but uh, yeah, as you said, if Psyduck doesn't show up, then that's that's probably the best backup option, I would well, say. But like I like I say, you know, the best let's go runs are the ones where you don't catch tentacool. Yep. Headstrong's crabby evolving about uh, forty minutes after Iron's did. Uh, this game is wild. <laughs> yeah, so Iron picking up the three Ultra Balls behind the trainer there, uh, which is pretty standard and very useful. Let's see if Iron watches the cutscene. Probably not. Again, very sad. Yeah, it looks like on oh, there's Iron's... there's a Psyduck glowing too, which doesn't help. Duck. 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 So one of my favorite things is to look at Pokemon names in other languages. Um, and in Korean, Psyduck is Gorapa Duck. So like, Duck is obviously just like Duck. But I was like, what does Gorapa mean? <laughs> it means headache. <laughs> so it's like called Headache Duck, which I think is pretty great. That is so perfect. <laughs> um, but talking to like Korean friends, it's like, something kind of the older generation says, and when their head hurts, they're like, Oh, Gorapa! So, you know, since Psyduck was probably named like 20 or 30 years ago, I think that's pretty funny. It's a little piece of trivia for Psyduck lovers out there. Okay, but now I want fan art of a Psyduck dressed up like Karapa the Rapa. <laughs> that would be awesome. German Snorlax is Relaxo. I like that one, too. That's a yeah, good that, one. That is powerful. Uh, meanwhile, we have speedruns going on, though. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Headstrong. Headstrong's looking for that Ponita. I mean, there's still a giant patch of grass down here. Um, Can and it's we always... talk about the crab running behind? Oh, I was going to say, I love the, how big Kingler is. Just, like, <laughs> running behind. So funny. Uh, accidentally pets the Rhyhorn. Probably distracted by that Psyduck in her way. Picks up the Silver Raspberries. Make the catch a little easier. Yeah, don't hit it, I don't hit it. Ah, there's the Ponita, okay. I was She's about to good. say, here's the biggest patch of grass on the route, so if it's going to be anywhere, it's going to be here. Yeah. Oh, the attack at the last second. That She'll was rude. Fire. Oh, and misses the, the circle there. It is a tricky catch, going to the side, and with the Ultra Ball, it still has a pretty good chance of staying in. Yeah, so she's good. Yes, Phoenix? Jesse and James fights. Again, still very synced with Yaxo and Iron here. Ooh, misses the one shot right. on Weezing okay, well. and Pikachu dies? Is this... This is not as expected, right? Like, Weezing survives barely. Pikachu gets KO'd. For Iron. I mean, I'm not worried that the, about finishing the fight, but... Seeing Pikachu get KO'd. Tough. Yeah, so Headstrong emptying out the party, and then one thing you do is you immediately evolve the Ponita into a Rapidash, because it evolves after one level. Um, and then also it's a much, much faster mount. 
than Rhyhorn, so we just evolve it uh, and mount it and then just ride it for the rest of the run. So Rapidash, very useful, uh, which puts Headstrong at 40 catches. So then we imagine two for the Pidgey Evolutions is 42, Lapras Porygon, 44, Coughing Weezing, 46, Psyduck will evolve, 47, and I assume there's three more I'm forgetting there. Uh, I forget what else is... Oh yeah, Dodrio is 48. And then I'm forgetting two somewhere, but... Yep, just moving on, and she's going to get Surf down here. But yeah, uh, looks like Yaxo is going through the Jesse and James fight as per typical. Growlithe evolved into Ar Arcanine for Iron, uh, which becomes the Mount Pokemon, I assume? Yes. Uh, basically, we because, you know, we're catching the Growlithe 100% of the time, or basically 100% of the time, and it's a great sacrifice Pokemon for just for the that Jesse and James fight. Uh, picking up the Firestone, evolving into Arcanite, and getting that little bit of extra movement speed for basically the length of Route 17. Uh. Um, because you know, basically, you're just running from here uh, down Route 17 till you get C Skim, mm -hmm. and you know. Let's face it, your opponent has probably not evolving until you get to Cinnabar Island anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you get Sea Skim, arguably, depending on what your catch situation and what you need to evolve and stuff is, you can deposit the Arcanine, uh, fly to Pallet, do the little bit of walking to get to the water, and then do the little bit of walking to get to the Pokemon Mansion, and make sure yeah, that's not fast by, yeah, yeah, yeah. by the time you leave. Yeah. So Headstrong gets C skim, and then here is the fun part of going in the water, and we need to catch a Staryu for sure, and then I assume she's gonna skip Tentacool if uh if the tracker is still right. Yep. Um but in the water you cannot do the two controller catches, so you have to use one controller, which is typically why a lot of runners will pick up the silver raspberries. Glowing doesn't matter too much here. What's the CP on this star you? Let's take a look. Wow, 1101. That now, is a juicy star you. Yeah. This means that the star you, on average, has a very good stats. Like, the rich um, get richer. <laughs> it, it could be the case that, you know, it's got like 30 ones across the board except for special attack and speed but odds are good that even in that case both of those stats are still very high mm -hmm. i think he's a side up which is very nice uh, add that to the catch count um a strong pick up the water stone which we of course use to evolve star you into the star me and I assume she's just going to ignore everything and just move on to the mansion. Yep. Uh, like, if a tentacle spawns on top of her, which it doesn't, you know, she, I was going to say, she might catch it over running away and catching the coughing, but we don't live in that universe, so we don't have to think about it. <laughs> Plenty of coughings here. It's never really a concern uh, about finding one. And it's not moving, but it does troll her with an attack right away. So it doesn't need the Nanab, but unfortunately has to wait another second. But with uh, this, finish. Headstrong has finished catching Pokemon. Uh, everything else is going to be either evolutions or gifts. Mm -hmm. Iron finds the Ponita too, which is nice. Mm -hmm. On fact there. And since Yoxo is last, I'll just point out there's that nice little trainer skip there where you despawn at that Pokeball and then round the corner of the fence there uh, to yeah. skip the fight. But kind of missed that with, with the other runners there. Oh, Psyduck and Doduo. Let's go. Um, and 
And also, uh, as our two Pika runners finish up their catching on Route 17, do pay attention with just how close you can get to the trainers in the bottom half of the route. Like, those trainers do not have an aggro radius worth even mentioning. <sighs> I, the one danger for Headstrong coming up is the fight against Scientist Ted, I believe is his name. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, usually you use two controllers, you have your Starmie, and then you have your Rapidash, and then you just Psychic it to kill it. Um, but if, you know, if the Electrode's feeling spicy... It can thunderbolt your Starmie and crit and kill it, and it's very, very tough to recover from in my experience. So, um, you know, hopefully there's no caster curse or anything, um, but that is the one danger here of this run. And myself personally, I almost think of saving here to to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, it looks um, like at level forty-five, the star you has eighty-five special attack and ninety speed. So. Uh, etiquette in chat saying decent stuff. <sighs> yeah, decent. Iron going through the cutest cutscene in the game where Pikachu just talks to all the Pokemon. Well, and then getting it so is well. working on his horse. Yeah, so a bit of menuing here for Headstrong, so you uh, level up and evolve your Staryu into Starmie. You learn Hydro Pump. Um, you teach Scald as well. Uh, and then generally you'll put Rapid Ash in the second slot of your party too, which is already handled for us here. And then it's on to the Scientist Ted fight. He looks like a scientist. All scientists dress like this. Uh, as someone with a PhD can confirm. <laughs> Uh, looks like Iron has determined that his Ponyta is not Ooh. going to evolve uh, any day soon, so he's going to use the candy on it. Uh, Yaxo doing the absolutely terrifying trader passes <laughs> down at the bottom of Route 17 that are way less terrifying than they look. <laughs> and Starmie did get uh, hit there, but fortunately no critical attack, or critical hit, so... We're good, that just means Headstrong will need to rest at the bed uh, coming up, but that's a very, very minor time loss there. So all good on her end as we proceed through uh, the mansion. And this is one place where if you're just like really, really suffering on catch count, you can try to catch the Magmar, you can try to catch the Dittos that show up. Highly <laughs> inadvisable, but it is an option if you're just like really struck, stuck and need that last Pokemon. At a certain point, you know, you just have to take any port in the storm. Like, Iron passing that Pidgey there, that patch of grass, uh, that did me <laughs> dirty. <laughs> but, you know, it is there as an option. Um, that's honestly one of the things I really appreciate about this game, is just how, even if you don't hit, like, an optimal catch route, there's still backups upon backups upon backups uh, mm -hmm. meaning that the odds of finishing a run are very good. Yes, definitely. Might not be fast, um, but it'll Did you see the way. CP on the start? Uh, 1060. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I meant to be looking for that, um, but I looked a little too late. Yeah, so you can see Iron doing it, like a backup here, where you just... Well... Is he uh, going yeah. for the Vile Plume, or was he going... Oh, he is going for the Vile Plume. This is a... This is a strategy, for sure. <laughs> it's a bold strategy, Cotton. I have no idea what this percentage is. Yes, caught. Let's go. Oh, I love, love this. That plus the Onyx, man, this is quite the, the run. I'm on Team Iron now. Not Team Pika, but just, just Iron specifically. <laughs> As we watch Headstrong go through the, the trivia questions that Blaine asks, um, where you just pick one, two, 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 one. Um, but this is one part of the run where I always just 
overly go slow because I don't want to click the wrong thing and have to fight a trainer. Um, yeah. So what so, I wind up doing is I just mash B because it won't select anything. You mm, actually ha yeah. have to move it down and do it. Uh, Dynam in chat says that that was about an 85% chance to catch the Vile Plume. Nice. Yeah, I'm one of those people who uses a turbo controller because my hand just gets too messed up. So mashing B is not necessarily the best option. Uh, it's Yo, turboed fair. on A, and then if I turboed through that, it would just be a nightmare. But... <laughs> yeah. uh, Yaxo, do not worry. Uh, you're, you're doing great, and you know, sometimes internet gonna internet. Also, turbo controllers are good and based and my friend. Yeah, turbo controllers help in a three-hour run where there's tons and tons of button mashing. Exactly. And it lets you do more runs in a day, you know? A lot of times, if you're not playing with one, I'm sure a lot of runners can attest that you can do one, maybe two, and then you need to take some time off. Um, but turbo controllers help with that, for sure. Yeah. For, for me, this is, like, right at my limit for runs that I can do with my hands and mashing, but, like, I bought a turbo controller specifically for sort of shield runs. So not surprisingly, Headstrong Starmie is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Outspeeds uh, the Pokemon there um, for Blaine, so no issues with that fight as well. Um, we're going to get Dodrio here, Evolution, which is good. Um, meanwhile, Iron and Yaxo just trying to finish up the water segment here, making sure they go around the right side there because they want to avoid the vision of that swimming uh, rotator trainer there. Because if those catch you, it's pretty much a game over, right? Because you can't, you don't have anything that can win that fight, at least in the Eevee version. Um, yeah. Because their Pokemon are such high level and you haven't powered up your uh, Staryu yet. Yeah, Pika doesn't have much uh, better. Like, at this point, we're basically running the same composition outside of, like, maybe the Vile Bloop that Iron got. Yeah. <laughs> Vileplume can carry, for yeah. sure. And, like, if you do get hit there, like, it's so slow because, like, yeah, you can just uh, lose the fight, get sent back to a Pokemon Center, but you're usually holding on to four or five Pokemon that, you know, even if they can't uh, fight, you're you're still waiting for things. Uh, Comms mm -hmm. wants to know uh, wants uh, to be let know what I believe Headstrong's Headstrong done with catching, right? So it's just evolutions and the gift Pokemon. Um, evolve Coughing, uh, get Lapras, Porygon, Evolve Pidgey one more time, I imagine. Yep. And then, is there one yeah. last Evo? Yeah, it's Pidgeot, Golduck, uh, oh, yeah, Amazing, side and then Porygon, Lapras. Mm hmm. So this next part is where we go back and do all the gyms that we are playing the game normally, we would have done a long time ago. So these are all pretty quick and straightforward fights um, where Starmie just steamrolls through these gyms because it's just much higher level and, and very easy here. I'm just going to scald a few times uh, to get through, through each of these. So no real worries here. Um, the only real thing from Headstrong's perspective is just party management and a couple menus here or there just to make sure hit points are, are fine before going into uh, the next segment. Over on Ironside, uh, special attack is a little bit worse than Headstrong's 80 at level 45. Uh, speed is even higher. Not that Headstrong's going to have any speed issues. Yeah, I think she's fine on that front. So Iron Star V, even faster than that, frankly kind of a waste. Uh, and looks like uh, 120, 120 for Yaxo on stalled teaching. And Yaxo going for this tough catch here. Yeah. With Ultra Ball and great though, 
I don't think it's guaranteed, but I, I would imagine it's a decent chance to catch her. Nice. I've nice. never really had any issues with it. Uh, like that is the default thing you do on the on that grammar. Ah, uh, okay. And then nicely we get Thunderbolt here uh, in Headstrong's uh, run, so we're going to teach that later because that's going to be a very important move for Starmie to learn. As Iron is fighting Scientist Ted, Rabidash takes the Thunderbolt, which is optimal. Interestingly, she puts Thunderbolt in slot 2 and Hydro Pump in slot 4. What do you think about that? Where do you usually put them? I usually do it the other way because that's what the notes I learned said to do. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me but, too, me too. You know, definitely yeah. one of those things that I think comes down to runner preference. Yeah, I don't think there's a benefit because either way it's one move down or one move up to get to either of them. Yeah. Right? It's just the third slot is the one that takes the most time to get to, so that should be your least used move, I imagine. Which, unfortunately, uh, that's where Psychic lands by default, so... Yeah. We use lots of Psychics later. Psychic management is something that's uh, pretty important as the run goes on. Headstrong doing a little bit of trolling, uh, showing the Gatekeeper at Erica's gym a coughing. Uh, the uh, Gatekeeper girl immediately buries her face in it and talks about how good it smells. Moving and then, on. did she also say it's super cute in all caps as well? Yeah. Yeah, uh, every cute. single Pokemon is adorable, smells good, and is super cute. I wish they made like just one of them that kicks you out. Um, but you know, just for funsies. Yeah, yeah like if it was like a vile plume, come on. A vile plume, a muck, a wheezing, yeah. you know, just one of those Pokemon that canonically just smells rancid. Yeah. Yeah, but the fight here is going to be very easy. It's just going to be uh, three psychics um, for Erica's Pokemon before moving on to Sylphco, which is uh, the next real fun part of the run. There's Irons going through the, the trivia gauntlet. Hopefully correctly clicking on the second option here, not missing an input. Uh, Clearly I'm not a believer in Caster Curse because I keep mentioning stuff like this. Yep. Uh, Yaxo gets through Pokemon Mansion without any issues. All of our tra all of our uh, runners done catching Pokemon. Uh, any difference you see on screen is basically just down to evolutions. So here for Iron, and then eventually Yaxo when he gets to uh, Blaine, is we can watch for whether they get confused at first. Um, we we kind of hope for not confusion because it saves a turn, but a lot of times the Pokemon will lead off by confusing Starmie, and then you have to go in and, and cure yourself with that. But hopefully that's not what happens here. So we'll see for Iron. Yep. You do have two... Flamethrower! And not burnt! Very nice, very nice. Let's go! Yeah, you do have two full heal items in your inventory, the Peter Crunchies and the Shalor Sable, mm -hmm. um, that you've just been granted over the course of the run, so uh, Pika Runners who never buy a burn heal are still safe here. And let's see what the... Speed is, yeah. So I think someone might have said speed already, right? But this is a, if you didn't catch your stats, this is a way to just kind of gut check your Starmie mm -hmm. speed. Like if you outspeed the Rapidash, you have at least 117 speed. So that's good to know. Yeah. Um, I think all of our runners uh, are crossing Blaine's speed threshold. Okay, that's um, great. I know that Irons is even faster than Headstrong's and she had no issues. Great. Yeah, let's hope for that uh, Yaxo doesn't get... Yaxo gets flamethrower and no burn as well. Good luck for our runners go. today. Uh, Why Hinsdrum can't that happen in my for runs? For the hyper-optimization where you hide under the awning to Erica's gym when you fly away from her. <laughs> yeah. 
which frankly is a little silly, but I don't know how much time it loses it saves versus trying to line it up. <laughs> So I'm interested to see what she does for the blue fight here. Um, one way to do it is to have, I didn't catch if she swapped her party or not, um, but you can have Dodrio, because um, Exeggutor is the one Pokemon, right, that kind of counters your Starmie, where you don't have anything great to deal with it. Um, so you can use other options for it. And yeah. one is to have the Dodrio, and then you use the X attack on the Dodrio, and it drill pecks, kills the Exeggutor, and then your Starmie cleans up. Um, but you can also just use a Rapidash if you want instead as well. So it'd be interesting to see what she goes with here. Yeah, and there's also been some cooks around it, you know, using like Fire Punch from Magmar. Um, there, the. There's a lot of really interesting tech based off what you've had, so uh, I don't think any of our runners are going to do anything spicier than Fire Blast. Yeah, so we got Rapid Ash here. And we get the hit. But if you thought uh, Headstrong needing to hit the Fire Blast RNG was spicy, I think it's about time we started talking about the next fight. <sighs> yeah, this is uh, the bane of some runner's existences. Um, we're going to have to fight Archer here, which, in addition to just being quite a bit of RNG, is also, for some reason, I don't know if anyone actually knows why, but... Just the turns take so long, and the camera pans so long around all the, the characters and Pokemon, and it's just, why does this fight take so long? <laughs> Ugh. And yesterday I got, for the first time ever, like a three-turn fight in this, so nice. usually three turns is best, four turns you're happy, five you're okay, and sometimes it goes more than that and you just might have to reset. Not that we're yeah. going to have resets here, but... Like... You know, there's five Pokemon here, so for my money, I'd consider, like, a five-turn fight to be, like, the baseline. You get any more than that, you're really happy. You you get lower than that. Um... Yeah, and what she's really hoping for here is uh, not a Protect from Muck, and the Self-Destruct from Electro, that's great. And there, I don't think it Protected, right? Because Protect would have gone first. So, so I think I think I'm ready to start believing commentary blessings. Yeah, this is that is the dream first turn there for Headstrong. Very very nice first turn. Um, the worst turn is when Electro thunders your Starmie and Muck protects, and then you're just miserable. Um, but here, then you Psychic on the Weezing, and then hopefully Q Bone throws the Bone Meringue, um, which can really hurt the Radicate. So let's see. Pleasing done. Bone Meringue, very nice. Alright, I think we might get it. We might get it, Likey. Psychic on the Golbat. No Protect and Bone Meringue. Let's get it. Let's get come on, it. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get it. Okay. 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 Cubone behave. Yeah, let's go! Oh my god, the three-turn fight! Oh. That is the dream. After our hype up that this is like a very miserable RNG segment, you know, all you have to do is just do that. I mean, it's a very easy fight. Right? Yeah, just don't overthink it. It's it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, and like, the RNG on that is... Like, not only do you have to get the optimal first turn, but then Cubone has to cooperate and go for two turns of Bone Meringue. Um, but... What? 
While we're going through the rest of the Sylph cutscenes, um, both of our Pikachu runners uh, seem to be floating around Celadon City. Iron already on the Erika fight. We've talked about this. This isn't anything to write home about. Yaxo cutting down the bush to get over to the Celadon gym. Uh, again, nothing really exciting. We're going to run through the maze. We're going to cut down a few bushes. Uh, Headstrong doing a really nice trainer pass on that spinner here in the teleporter room. Getting into the cutscene. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yaxo showing off Starmie as his cute Pokemon for today. That is honestly just like the easiest thing in the world. Uh, it is your first Pokemon year right there. I always find it funny when people do other ones, as previously mentioned. Uh, Headstrong going into the final Jesse James fight. Uh, this one is fairly straightforward. You don't need to set up for it. Two psychics will carry the day. The only thing you have to worry about is where uh, the Team Rocket uh, members decide to target, specifically if James sends his wheezing after your Starmie, you might need to heal, especially if it gets paralyzed, because Weezing will probably go for Thunderbolt here, uh, and you want to take out Arbok first. Um, going for Stomp with Stomp with Rabidash is really nice, because it does have that flinch chance. Ooh. One shot there. Very, very nice. Mm. Headstrong did get the coughing level, so... Um, she is done outside of the final two gift Pokemon. Oh god, Iron almost ran into that dog! <laughs> I really get trolled so often walking into that doorway. It's either Rattata or something just running south. It's, it's so funny and frustrating at the same time. I had that in practice when I was doing a practice run last night. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you so far away? Uh, Iron about to go do the blue fight, Headstrong evolving Weezing, and about to go into Giovanni 2, and Yaxo cleaning up Erica. Lickety split, no issues whatsoever. Yeah, and this, uh, this Giovanni fight is much easier than the last one and much easier than the next one. Um, just because the Starmie at this point is effectively very overleveled. Um, so it's just special attack and then scalds all the way through. But the fights do get trickier after this one. Um, so this was almost a little, little rest before the real fights um, going on later. Yep. Now we're getting out of the phase of this game that's all about catching and seeing what spawns and really interesting things. And now we're getting deep, deep into classic Pokemon speedrunning, where we're thinking about things like ranges and playing around crits. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see some of the decisions that are made. Um, I assume, I don't know, I mean, Headstrong, you would say save strats, but I think she might be pushing PB time, so maybe she takes it a little risky, you know? Yeah, um, like, uh, yeah. you're, on the one hand, you're, you're in a tournament, you're in a race, on the other hand, saving doesn't take that long, so if you, like, decide, yeah, I'm far enough ahead, I'm gonna go for a risky, try and push out a PB, you know, maybe drop a, a save or two just for safety in case something goes wrong and you need to revert back to that save. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she picks up the Master Ball here, which, well, doesn't really do anything for us at this point. Um, but then she's going to go through and get uh, another rare candy and get the Lapras and the last two or, uh, last two Pokemon we need as gifts, which will put her at 50 unless something was messed up on the tracker, which I doubt. But, you know, we'll see when we get to Koga. Yep. But yeah, uh, going down on iron screen, we are starting Archer 2. Can we get another good Archer fight? 
The answer may surprise you. Self-destruct. 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 Let's see it. I am channeling my biggest exploding thoughts. Oh no. Okay, at least Muck didn't protect. But with the thunder on Starmie, um, Iron's gonna ha have to heal here. Boomerang's good though. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna help too much. Um, I mean, at least it looks it's like it's a one and yeah. a half shot. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I meant that the electrode might just self destruct anyway. So like, yeah. Um, Fair, but if the electrode does self destruct, okay, uh, yeah, that yeah. does get some damage on the eradicate. So yep, if that's true. Uh, boomerang. boomerang... Would... Oh, very nice. All Wait. right. Oh, did it survive at one? So. Oh my gosh! Orchard Archer! Cubone! And Electrode, why couldn't you do a little more damage? I mean, it's fine, we just eat the one extra Sucker Punch, and if Cubone attacks again here... Yeah, but watch, it's gonna use Pumped Up. Cube Cubone is getting pumped. Yeah. And it's done. And nice. just in not time a, for Yoxo to come in. Oh. Alright. Uh, in the meantime, Headstrong is doing the last buy menu, uh, where we buy tons of max repels, X special attacks, X speeds, things of that nature, uh, just to last us through the end of the run before going on to Sabrina's gym. But let's watch how Yoxo's fight goes here. Mm -hmm gonna go with the standard opener we'll see what happens from the enemies well we'll eventually see it first it has to go around and show all the trainers all the pokemon etc oh it gets thunderbolt to two but no protect so same as irons fight boomerang and same as irons fight cubone's right. stronger not that that matters <laughs> i want it, does knocking Electrode down to low health influence its odds of using self-destruct? Mm. Well, no matter what I say, someone in chat's gonna correct me, so I'll just wait for them to answer. <laughs> but, uh... Ooh, that's good, okay. Things are looking All good right. for Yaxo, though. Yeah, Cubone level 28, so that'll evolve, too. Yeah, and Cubone will evolve as well. So that's good. Oh, that's right, making her good. way through Sabrina's teleporter maze. Yeah, let's see how this fight goes for Iron here. Hopefully nothing crazy for a star me. Easy peasy. So the Sabrina fight's kind of a fun one where there's almost a, a nice little decision tree there. Um, what we're hoping for is best case scenario, no light screen. Uh, second best scenario is light screen turn one. Worst case scenario, light screen turn two. Because we need this light screen to wear off before the second Pokemon Alakazam comes out. Um, so. She's going to special attack, uh, turn one. We did Get see the light screen. screen. Yep. Uh, so what she'll do is she'll just keep buffing and healing and attacking until the light screen wears off. And then um, we'll be able to effectively deal with the other Pokemon afterwards. Because it lasts, what, three turns? Two or three turns. Forget. But yeah, and then light screen should wear off. Yep. And then uh, we can fight Alakazam normally. Yeah. And if you do see the extra turn before the light screen goes up, you run into issues where you need to stall an extra turn, so you typically heal. Um, and of course if you run into an awkward scenario where light screen is up any crit, then you have to stall a turn on Alakazam, mm. and... God, that fight is definitely one of the ones where good luck can be a problem. Yeah. <sighs> Alright, level up 
48. 123 special attack. That is pretty good. Almost not not amazing, but very good, I would say. Not quite at the guaranteed kill range for Pokemon yet, but very good. But hey, we have six badges now. We're all six away. Us. <laughs> we collectively. Our badges chat. Yes. The Bugs Bunny communism meme. Exactly. Our badges. <laughs> But yeah, gonna heal up, gonna fill up Starmie's power points, uh, because at this point of the run, we don't really have any free heals until we get into Victory Road, so power point management does become a concern uh, through this section of the run. Yeah, uh, especially like for Psychics. Did not buy any X special defense, which is interesting. Uh, that signals to me that she's going to go for safe strats through the Elite Four for folks cooking in chat. Mm -hmm. So she's moving on to the Koga Gym now, and this is where we get the 50 Pokemon check. Phew. Okay. <laughs> Didn't miscount. Nearly two and a half hours of nonsense just to get kicked by Koga would be a terrible kicked by Koga time. <laughs> Shoutouts to the second meme category of this game, kicked by Koga, where your goal is to get kicked by Koga by showing up to his gym with less than 50 Pokemon in your Pokedex. Yep, I'm getting kicked out as fast as possible. So this gym is funny in a way that just all these Pokemon can use Protect and it's just really annoying. But in addition to the time loss, you might also use Psychics. And again, getting back to that PP like we were talking about earlier, they get wasted and then you might have to be careful managing it. Oh my gosh! So use Minimize and then Protected and then Mist. So she used at least one, maybe two extra psychics there, unfortunately. I wonder if she's been stalled here. Nope. Oh, and protect. Oh my gosh, the psychics are just are just disappearing. She's gonna have to get a little creative later on. Yeah. Was her star not good enough to go for scald on the B drill? Um I think that uh let's see. Granted, even if it is, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised to hear if she was yeah. flustered. Yeah. I, I think she could have got it. I don't know if it would have been guaranteed, but I think it would have had a good chance. Yeah, like, because she... I think the star is still at full HP, so I don't think there was a Moonblast. Mm -hmm. And then for Koga... All these Pokemon can also protect as well. The dream, though, is to have Weezing self-destruct uh, early on. Hopefully that happens, but we'll see. You say that, but in my last run, uh, my Starby was low enough health that it killed. <laughs> Turn 1 protect there is great. That mm -hmm. rare is, I would say that's pretty rare. Usually it like poisons you, turn 1. And then you have to heal turn two, and then it'll protect turn two, and you kill it turn three. So um, that was really nice from the wheezing, but unfortunately the venom off. Using protect here as well. No more protects, please. Come on. Yeah, and strong burning through uh, you know, psychics like candy. Luckily, uh, Golbat is uh, weak enough that it'll go down in Thunderbolt even without the scoop type attack bonus. How many psychics does she have left? She'll have two left. Oh my gosh, she'll have one left. Yeah, this is... This is spicy. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how she plays that. Um, but Iron's fighting Sabrina now. And let's see. Let's pray for no light screen turn one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just p picking up Lapras, I'm going to be entering Sabrina's gym very shortly. All of our runners seem to be in very good spots with their hit. Reflect. Oh no, don't do the turn light to light screen. No! Okay, so in this instance, um, you gotta use the X speed for the Alakazam, and then um, you use a potion, yep. Yep. To buy the extra turn, but also heal just in case. And then you can proceed with your scald. So that was really bad luck for Iron there, unfortunately. Yeah. Luckily, you know... You played it well. You played it, it as well as you can and did exactly what you're supposed to. It was just bad luck. Yeah, it's, it's like seeing Protecting Koga's gym. Like, nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can play around. It's just one extra round that you have to sit through. Um, you know, luckily with Sabri the Sabrina fight here, it's expected. The strats basically account for it being a possibility. So it's just not anything to worry about. You just play it by ear and roll your eyes that you lost a turn on Sabrina. Meanwhile, Headstrong learning, what is it called? Pushy push, technically. Um, just makes Eevee very strong and able to knock giant stone pillars around. Strong push. <laughs> um, push, push, actually... whatever. I don't know. It's just called whatever I want to call it. Yeah, it's pushy push, surfy surf, cutty cut, like <laughs> sea skim. Yeah. Um, but either way, that's the last little thing we'll need because we're going to use that in Victory Road to move a bunch of stuff around. And then flash. <laughs> Alright, let's see how Yoxo's Sabrina fight goes. Going through the last couple teleporters here. Hey, did you know Megas are in this game? No. <laughs> As a speedrunner, no. Um, the only time we see one, right, is of course the final uh, rival fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Oak is here giving us the Mega Stones for all of the starters. Which is also kind of weird because there's no held items in this game. Right. Um, you get a little cutscene here, Evie, just rejoicing, uh, just being happy, talking about some flowers, and then we'll move on to the last little stretch of the game. We're moving right along. Yep. Two and a half hours in. I can't believe Evie is basically spending this entire time making a flower crown for you. <laughs> He's busy. Right? I mean, your starter isn't doing any of the fighting. They gotta do something at this point. <laughs> uh, Yuxo starting the Sabrina fight. It, iron. Uh, not getting kicked by Koga. Let's go. Let's go. Alright, let's hope for no light screen here. Uh, oh, 2C for Sabrina. Okay. I'm not totally familiar with with that strat, but so surely it's safer, right? Thank you, Spider, for doing the calc on the Archer 2 self-destruct plus bone barang damage, where if the Raticate eats the self-destruct and then gets hit by bone barang, It is point. It is zero point three nine percent to live. Uh, Headstrong playing it safe here, um, so you can one C this fight uh, with Hydro Pump, if, and her special attack is high enough, I believe. Um, but then, of course, it can miss. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's not too bad at this fight. Later on, there is a fight where it's much worse, but. She's in first place right now, um, cruising along and just plays a little safe, uh, where you use the X special attack instead. 
Iron's gonna fight Koga here though. Hopefully not as many protects as we saw earlier. Yeah. Uh, Yakso mentioning in chat that he misclicked on the Sabrina fight. He is now doing two controller strats. Uh, gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, not sure. I missed whether or not the two controller was uh, summoned immediately or if it was in response to the misclick. Ooh, another turn one protect from Weezing. It's good for Iron. Uh, the good news is the two controller strats are going to clean up just fine. Ah, 2C was in response to misclick. Thank you. Venomoth being a jerk and protecting, unfortunately. And Headstrong going into the Giovanni fight here. Uh, she, I assume she's going to use the X defense. You, if you have a high enough base defense, you can skip this against the Doug Trio and try to risk it. But um, given how she's been playing, I, I assume she's going to play this very safe to get through this fight. Yeah, especially sure with the Rapid Dash. Oh, right, 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 right. Because she's going with the safe strats. Yeah, so she's just going to gotcha. two controller yeah. it. Um, you expect to see the earthquake. You expect the rabbit ash to die, but because doing an AOE attack in Pokemon does less damage if it hits more than one target, uh, Starmie is guaranteed to live. Plus, you only need to set up the one X special attack here. So at this point, it is just hashtags fault sweep. <laughs> Iron going down, doing a little bit of story, story progression here, getting the gold teeth, is it, I believe, mm -hmm. from our Jesse and James, our favorite Team Rocket members. And Yaxo also popping into the exact same cutscene, uh, just doing it before Kogo as opposed to after. Now, are you an early toother or a late toother? Oh, I do it right away, because otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> I immediately go down and get them. <laughs> also, I the reason I like doing it first is because the exit from the beach area is on the left, closer to the gym. Mm. And if I do it late, it makes me feel like I have to backtrack. Yeah, a little bit more efficient for sure. Yeah, Giovanni's gonna monologue a little bit. We're gonna catch him monologuing. And then he's gonna leave. And then... Uh, gonna move right along yakso 50 pokemon over we all, all three runners overcame the difficulty of tracking to make sure we have 50 so everything's looking good yep honestly worst feeling in the world is getting kicked by coca <laughs> when i was learning this run i uh got all the way to like victory road and forgot to get pushy push or strong push or whatever we're calling it so i had to like leave and go all the way back <laughs> and talk to the um the dude who teaches it to you and then go all the way back through the badge check and everything um still pb though because my pb was like three hours and 45 minutes or something but uh Yakso um, gets the moon blast but does not get the special attack drop importantly uh gets one protect on the muck though Yeah, we need to watch the Psychic count for Headstrong and see how it goes. I'm just, I, she'll probably be fine though, right? I think you just need it for the Venusaur. I think so. I don't know uh, how you deal with Raichu. Hmm. Uh, Yoxo gets through Caden just fine. You can use, yeah, you can use Scald on Raichu and uh, it'll be fine, so. Scald solves. Scald solves everything. Wash away your sins with the power of Scald. <laughs> Precisely. Mm. 
Let's see if we can go three for three on the first turn protect from Koga's wheezing. That would be glorious. Okay. We love oh. to see it. We do. I mean, all things considered, our runners have been having pretty good luck today, I think. Other than a few blips. Uh, um, what happened with Headstrong? Oh my gosh, I was watching the Koga fight. Oh right. no. Uh... She might oh. not have... Did she hmm. run out of Psychics? Uh, someone's asking about a Pet Blizzard thing? I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, it was Sand attack? Was... Did her star not outspeed the Raichu? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna... Can't look up the VOD. Well... Headstrong unfor unfortunately takes away... Ah, gotcha. Did we figure out what happened? Uh, no, we... Oh. Okay, Headstrong saw Petal Blizzard off of the uh, Vile Plume. Um, must have missed her range? Or accidentally misclicked? Or something? I'm watching, I'm rewatching it now, just for okay. everyone's sake. Yeah. Uh, so she used the XP turn two, kills Marowak, fine. Vile Plume comes out. Yakso is picking up strong push. Hydro Pump and Fire Blast. Hydro Pump misses, Fire Blast hits it, but then, yeah, then the Vile Plume one shots the Sturmy. So that's uh, really unfortunate. Okay, trying to save the extra Classic Hydro Pump miss. Going for a backup strat. Okay, that makes sense. Unfortunate, but it makes sense. Yeah. Well, on the plus side, she has psychics now. Mm -hmm. Iron about to start the Giovanni fight, also going to controller. Yakso doing the little bit of running around here to get into the gym. Just trying to take out this file plume with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> just like, I got you this time. <laughs> but yeah, that's honestly one of my... Uh, I don't want to say, say, that, say this in a bad way, but that's actually one of the really interesting skills that races like this test. Your nerves and your resilience when things mm -hmm. like that go wrong. Like. Oh yeah, I, I assume she, it seems like she just picked it right up and it just kept on going. I would have thrown my controller across the room or something. I get tilted exactly. so easily. So I think she has a really strong mindset and she's still in a very, very good position here. Yeah, and like, you know, obviously if it was a PB attempt for any one of us, all of us would be like, resetting, cutting stream, going home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and like, all of our runners have had, you know, various setbacks like that over the course of this run. You know, from Pokemon breaking out to uh, miss inputs to, you know, just little bits of bad RNG. But the the real thing that these no reset runs of Let's Go test is that stick with itness, that ability to just like look at the nonsense the game throws at you and says and say, no, I'm going to finish this run anyway, and you can't stop me. I do think Yakso and Iron are not, like, too far apart. I mean, it's eh, maybe, like, a minute and a half to two minutes, but, like... Yeah. Something... I think if Yakso wanted to go for, like, 1C strats, and then if Iron goes for 2C strats, and then a little bit of luck breaks their way on the Elite Four, like, Yakso could potentially get second here. 
I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. This this is definitely not done, like by yeah. any means. And like on Headstrong's side, you know, if Iron goes for uh, risky strats and Headstrong, you know, plays it safe, there's a very real chance that that gap gets closed a bit too. Yeah, and she's committed to the the same strats, right? Based on the items yeah. she bought and stuff. Yeah, and so also, this is the, the like you know after uh, taking a wipe like that, you know. I he, he, he deciding whether or not to like go risky to try and push it further doesn't really feel like the right play if you know you're okay. ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the other fight where you can one see it, but I would say it's much riskier than the other one. Fortunately, she hits here, hydro pump, everything goes well. Um, but if you miss the hydro pump here, you get beat up pretty badly. Um, so this is definitely a risky 1C fight, but yeah. everything looks good for her, and this is where the, the Psychic would have come into play if she didn't have to reset. Knock yep. out the Venusaur. You use your last Psychic here, and then you get the free heal from the Officer Jenny. Now let's see how Iron's doing in this rival fight. Just took out the... the is it Pidgeot already, or is it just Pidgeotto now? I um, believe it's Pidgeot at this point. Okay, took out the Pidgeot. Marowak next. Using the X speed. Yep. Very nice. Oh. oh. Hmm. No, I needed to use Scald there because um, what happened is that the the special attack's not high enough. So mm -hmm. went with the Psychic on the Marowak um, after only using one X special attack. And that should have been a Scald, actually, yeah. um, which killed the Rapidash. And there's no other Pokemon in the party. Um, I think should be fine. Yeah, if you've yeah. got the uh, Revive, you can use it before the Kangaskhan. Yeah, the, the only downside here is that um, you would normally have the Rapidash heal your Starmie on the last turn in the fight because it has to do something anyway. Uh, but now, you know, you have to use a revive, potentially, most likely, and then also heal your Starmie, so it's a little bit of time loss there. Yeah, like, it basically creates the extra menu. Um, you're actually doing 1C Giovanni. I love it. No. Wait, no, did he just 2C and the Rapidash just died? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I was totally watching the, the Iron stream. Yeah. Uh, to answer the question in chat, no. Uh, Iron use took an extra turn on Marowak to use an extra ex special attack. But yeah, all of our runners having a rough go of it here in the end game. Yeah. Um, it's because I said everything was going well. Now the caster curse is finally coming back. <sighs> what a horrible night, etc. Uh, but you know. Headstrong getting through, block pushing puzzles, Doxo, all set up and taking out Giovanni, Iron, uh, getting a break for a little bit, honestly, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. You know, you just get to surf around, you get to talk to all these people who talk about how wonderful Sabrina is, which mood. Um, as Headstrong goes to the final trainer pass makes it look easy makes it look easy and it's not super hard but it's definitely not easy to thread that needle there because you have to despawn the rapid ash in the corner go around and sort of weave and avoid the sight line for alexa because that trainer kind of a pain to fight she has dragon air she has wiggly tough she's hip on chan not a very fun fight so obviously avoiding it is very beneficial yeah like it's easy enough. Uh, there are strats for it, but it does eat a little bit of extra time, and it does make your psychic routing, as we've been talking about, the power point management around your psychics, a little tricky for uh, the end game. And uh, that jinx can be quite annoying from Caroline there, but uh, Headstrong handles that nice and easily. Meanwhile, Yaksa is playing with Pikachu. 
Can't two C maybe because is the other Pokemon dead? He probably needs to revive Rapidash because uh, you can actually revive. You can ride your Mount Pokemon um, even if they're dead, but you can't do two C. So yeah, we can see that um, Rapidash is dead there. So there's no two C, and Starmie is really weak. So it looks like Yaxo's probably going to Pokemon Center. Yeah, good yeah. call. Good call. Yeah, you do get the three of revives that we got, you know, like an hour and a half ago. But as we've seen, you know, all of our runners having varying degrees of difficulties. Mm -hmm. That's strong moving the pillar about 20 miles to the left there. And the second most fun part of the run after Nugget Bridge. And then going to go fight uh, Dawson here. So this is the part of the run where um, why the category is called no mount skip because there are specific inputs you can do there to um, time your mount and the despawning or spawning to skip those trainers. Um, but they're quite precise, tricky to do. So generally people run this category where there's no mount skip. So there's not like the onus to uh, make those mount skips happen. Yeah, like, those bounce skips are so precise. Like, I know that the runners who do run it buy specially molded Joy-Con casings so that they can set up uh, the skips on the carton directions much easier. Okay, yeah, hold the uh, out nice and easily. Let's see Yaxo handle this Marowak here. Um, yeah, Thunderbolt was not... <laughs> I was hoping he'd catch that. Good catch. Yep. <laughs> yeah. and, and there we go, there's the skull. Yep. Through uh, Victory Road on her way to the Ingo Indigo Plateau did skip picking up the full restore, so fully committed to the only the safest of safe strats. I always do a weird hybrid of just picking it up, but then just summoning a second controller anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I need to do something safe. Um, but yeah, skipping that, you're pretty much locked into using 2C. But uh, given how things are looking, you know, I, I think that's the right move for her. So first, she's going to run into Lorelei and her large Lapras here. And using Lapras Strat, swapping it out for Rapidash. A fan favorite, Lapras Hype in chat. One of these days I need to actually learn how these work. It's easy, just put Lapras in slot two. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, so for Lorelei, we're going to buff up our special attack a few times and then just thunder our way through the fight here. Um, there are some, if you're playing for a PB and 1C, um, there are some ranges that you need to consider based on your special attack, which can affect how many X special attacks you use at the beginning of the fight, but that might not be an issue here, let's see. Yeah, if your um, special attack is high enough, it, you basically get a save a free turn. But it looks like Headstrong is in a situation she's using where three. I it, don't know if she needed three, but I think she's just being safe. Yeah, um, like I don't know what her special attack is. I lost track. The same, and it might be one of those situations where it's like a thirteen out of sixteen, and she's like, "No, I already took one wipe. I am one hundred percent going to make sure that I do not have any ranges to even worry about hitting." Yeah, she's okay with the ten second time loss. <laughs> For using that extra item there. Yeah. Yuxo. Uh, Yuxo, probably a little too far from the pillar. Yeah. <laughs> Did go. you get a nice slot in a teleport slide there to yeah, get the pillar push? Slick, slick movement. Mm -hmm. uh, probably also gonna go for the uh, two controller here. Or not? 
I might summon it in Yox battle. Yoxa's going for it. Yoxa's <laughs> trying to catch up here. I love it. Let's Absolute it. baller. Hydro pump hype. Let's go. Come on. Let's get the hydro pump. Well, you know, special attack first, then hydro pump. Oof. Okay, this is why it's risky. Do it. Hit, hit, hit. No! Yaxo, we love you for trying. Oh, my heart. I love that you oh. went for it. Strong just gonna Bruno is the, the easiest out of the Elite Four fights. Um pretty pretty handily, right? So Bruno's the easiest, then Lorelei, and then Lance, and then Agatha, I would say. Um Lance and Agatha, maybe maybe some other opinions, but Yeah, like Lance and Agatha, like on the one hand, uh depending on like any RNG in Lance comes down to how bad your star is. Mm, Any, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas Agatha can just do what she wants, and that fight can go upside down in a hurry. But you know, you can always go for hydro pumps to save the turn. That's true. Yaxo going for confused strats on Kangaskhan. So, uh, <laughs> do you want to talk about what turnarounds are? Sure. Um, so turnarounds are what happen with your Pokemon um, in this run later where uh, their friendship level just becomes high enough that I believe whenever they do a super effective move, they will turn around and look at you for some nice little validation. Like, hey, didn't I do a good job? Which, you know, is kind of sweet. But um, ultimately, it takes two seconds per turnaround. So it basically translates to two seconds per attack so you want to delay those turnarounds as long as possible because once they start happening each fight each attack gets two seconds longer which can really eat away at your time yeah what's up with iron oh, looks like on. iron stream just froze one sec i will see what i can do i gotta love that frame though we got double pika So Yaxo just moving along. No revives, I believe, for uh, for the Starmie. So just trying to survive and somehow get to Officer Jenny. Hopefully we can make that happen. Um, I get the fight. It's strong. So, didn't catch what happened, but I think we're looking good there. Yeah. Uh, so we saw a power of love. Very nice. I was watching the the innovative strategies Oxo was doing. Yeah, Gengar should be an easy knockout here. Um, using a hyper potion, and you see that turnaround there from the Starmie. Those are the the two second. Oof. Unfortunately, it looks like we may have lost Iron Stream for the time being. Mm. Well, that's why we have them locally record, so hopefully that's still working fine and, um, you know, the time can still be, you know, recorded and, and counted for everything. Indeed. Um, so... Uh, unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to watch it for now. Um, I won't go to the uh, two-player view just in case it comes back. Yeah. So Yaxo getting a nice reset. Um, just, you know, nice heal up. We can go through again. Rapidash tried its best. Yeah. Rapidash did everything it could. It's just not built for fighting. It's built for riding, you know? Yep. Oh my gosh, what if Yaxo runs out of repels? Oh. Well, we get some spicy dodges. <laughs> um, Headstrong takes out Agatha. Moving on to Lance. Isn't the Dragonite so cute? So chubby. 
So, like, on the one hand, Dragonite has no right being Dragonair's evolution. On the other hand, Dragonite's design is so good and perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Randall says 11 repels is more than enough. And I say, well, what if we have to go back to the Pokemon Center again? Um, yeah, so how it works with uh, Lance here is the beginning of the fight, the first Pokemon out there is Cedra, who doesn't really hit uh, super hard, so you spend the first five turns, if you're doing 1C, uh, the first five turns buffing up and using X special defense, using X speed, 3X special attacks, maybe heal if you took a lot of damage uh, before you power through the rest of the Pokemon there. Um, but with 2C, it's much quicker in that sense that you can use items faster. So, we'll move along here. Use X special right, attack, so use some psychics. On the... Uh, that was Jinx and Slowbro Trainer? The second one here? That's what the first Buck Club was. Uh, it's Hypno. Hypno, right. Yeah. So Hypno does have some ranges, um, but everything went fine there. Yeah, and and Hydro is moving right along. Hydro Pump, we love Hydro Pump. When it works. <laughs> Look, 80% of the time it works every time. Yes. Yeah, so just knock out the Charizard here. And then uh, in a, a typical fight, the Dragonite could possibly be a range here. You would need pretty high special attack to be able to handle 100% uh, there on the Dragonite. Um, but, oh yeah, you get the range or get the 100%, uh, whatever it is. And we're all good through Lance for Headstrong. Yep. Uh, so to confirm, should... Iron's internet did drop. He will be uploading his local recording. Uh, this is why we ask you to local record, uh, but when he finishes, if he finishes up in the race room, I will be sure to to update us with his time. It's strong on very good pace here, too. I mean, all things considered, you know, with the, the bad death and the terrible protects that got rid of all her psychics, like, which she couldn't really do anything about. Um, but other than that, like, she's been playing very, very well. This is a very, very good run from her. Um, Yaxo trying to get through this Jinx without being trolled. Oh! Well, the burn doesn't quite take care of it. No. But it does get through. No real danger, just a little bit of time loss, but... Yep. That's all right. Over on Headstrong's side, doing 2C champion strats. Uh, very straightforward. You take one turn to set up, and you hope the Lapras dies. Oh, there are After we see enemies. this whole cutscene. is just hanging out, enjoying the scenery. The Starmie uh, will one-shot everything from this point on. Giving us those two-second turnarounds, but, you know, nice and easy. Lapras level 37. More defense. Perfect. I assume she's going to pick up and just do AOP after this, so... <laughs> Just keep going. Um, but Yaxo moving the, the pillar along. About to go to the last trainer fight of Drew Road. I, I didn't catch the hit points in the Starmie, but this is a point where you might need to heal if your Starmie's weak. Because the Lick of Tongue can really beat you down if you're not healed. If only we could skip Dawson. <laughs> Boy, do I have a category for you. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah. First turn heal. Good call. Personally, I think I probably would have two seed this, but this, I mean, this works too. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of those where, you know, you, you gotta do what you're thinking in the heat of the moment as best you can. Yeah, and it's it's much easier here from the, the commentator booth, from the couch, you know, just to say, um, you know, I would do this, I would do that. Um, but when you're in the moment, you know, the nerves of the race, but it's so headstrong finished and beat the champion so now we have about a minute because there's already been some of it um for the cutscenes i think she might clock in right at about a 305 would be my guess um but the very gg from her very good run incredible start and she played very very well so it'll be great to have her in here and joining the call which i, I hope she can do after she you know officially punches the end of the clock hopefully her Switch doesn't crash or something. Um, that would be an awful DNF. But um, in the meantime, I've got my finger on the timer button for folks because uh, while we've been doing this, Iron is also getting very close to finishing in the background. All right, Headstrong is done. 3.04.45, very nice run, very nice time from her. So congratulations to her. She'll take first place in this group, which will give her three points for this portion of the Swiss round. Great start. It looks and like now... her race time time was a 3.04.53. Oh. Hmm. I... So there's going to be about an eight second of delay here. I forget which time we're actually using for the official counts. Well, regardless, we'll say that she did get first place, right? So I, I think we're good on that. And yes, um, <laughs> so that's the splitting hairs. But either way, she'll have the three points, which is good. The, the most you can get for the Swiss round uh, before moving on to the next round, though. I do believe that will affect seeding time for the next round. I think uh, we'll have to check with the the tournament supervisors, but I think the times that runners get in this round uh, potentially affect who they compete against next round. So uh, it is important, but from a points perspective, she will get the, the three points there. Um, so meanwhile, yeah, we're doing 1C, Yaxo. Doesn't even have second Pokemon in the party. Wonder if we're gonna go 1C all the way here. I wish I knew the special attack on uh, his Starmie here, so we could look at the ranges and build up a little hype on that. Alright, and so we have confirmation that it shouldn't matter this round so much what the time is, but later on for tiebreakers and stuff, uh, it, it might come into play. Gotcha, gotcha. So thanks, thanks for confirming that etiquette. So she knocks out Jinx. Or she. Uh, he knocks out Jinx. And uh, I think we're just going to be watching for what happens against Lorelei's. Um... No, wait, no, we're good on Lorelei, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After Jinx, it's, it's straightforward. So I think we're good for that. And I think Headstrong might have joined us. Hi. Congratulations. Very well played. You had a little bad luck at some points, but... Uh. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you... what pace I was on after Koga. I knew I was on pace to PB, but I also knew I only had one Psychic, and I had, wasn't 100% sure what I was supposed to do to fix that, so I just kind of hoped <laughs> it didn't work. Oh, then missed the Hydro Pump. Like, everyone missed it. We had to go back and check the VOD to see exactly what happened there. That was... I attempted to pump and fire blast. I don't even know if the pump would have done enough or not. I, I didn't think Scald would have. Because you were trying to one-shot it, I assume, instead of... Well, I was, yeah, I was trying I was trying to hit the Vile Plume, since I only had the one Psychic, and I needed to save that for the Venusaur. We just blame Koga and all those Protects that Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> that was so painful. Um, Minimize twice from Caden. 
you're just like, oh no. And after the three turn archer fight too, that was a, a really good. That really was good so archer good. Fight too. Would yeah, you have I... gone for uh, more risky strats if things went a little bit differently, or were you kind of set in going for like the two C safe am... strats? I'm always uh, set on two C strats. It's just I, my PB even has them. It's just I I don't I don't think the time is warranting enough for me to go for one C stuff. All right. Well, it worked out here with a nice first place as we watch Yakzo finish up. Um, if you didn't like hear or know, but Iron's like internet died or something along those lines, so we'll have to check yeah, his vod right. later. But. Um, yeah, and Yaxo is going through the lead four now. Um, yeah, you had a good EV too. It was. Um, I had a naughty EV. I yeah. had an 1100 CP star. <laughs> we were all very hyped about that. <laughs> I just. It was just a random menu mistakes all over the place that kind of got me. And then Koga's gym. <laughs> Well, we didn't notice the menu mistake, so you pulled a fast one on us. Um, if I may interject for a second. Yeah, please do. Uh, Iron has finished with a 309.11 and yes. is joining us via his phone. GGI. Hello, can you hear me? Iron, I love your catch route. It was incredible. <laughs> well, you, you know what? After getting the minus attack Pika and then um, just missing the when I, when, I, sorry, when I missed the throw on Pika, I knew it was going to be all downhill from there. And then I got minus attack and I went into this run thinking, I'm just going to have fun. And I had fun <laughs> and got a lot of weird stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and played yeah. played decently for what with what I was given. I, I think I had a minus attack Nido King as well. It was horrible. We were so hyped when you went for that Onyx catch. I was like, oh yeah, let's let's do it. This is, yeah, this is it, incredible. It, it spawned on top of me. And usually, if it's something that I can catch that I need, technically need, and it spawns on top of me, I usually just go for it every time. So you and Yaxo were neck and neck for a long. I don't know if you were watching the stream like on the side, but you two are neck and neck. Almost through, like Victor, the start of Victory Road, maybe a little bit before that, through Giovanni for sure. Um, that was a really close race, and then yeah, so had some good, really bad luck with with everything. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of following in the chat, but uh, mostly trying to focus on my run. So Yaxo is finishing up with the Agatha fight. And then, yeah, just so we, I know you guys missed the Elite Four, the entire Elite Four. Um, nothing crazy happened. Um, I did 1C for the first three. I uh, got power of, I got defense drop. So I got Frond Agatha, I got um, Flare, no power of love. But then I got um, Crunch defense drop. Then I got power of love, so it was fine. And then I had the uh, standard 2C Lance with, with Rapid Ash. And then uh, very slow champ because. Um, the Geot targeted Starmie, so. Mm. Oh. I, I don't know if people saw, speaking of the Elite Four, I totally skipped over uh, the second X special during 2C and Agatha, and did not <laughs> one-shot a Gengar, and it hit me with Shadow Ball down to five. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the health bar going, I was like, oh no! <laughs> It was so sketchy. I was like, I clicked it, and I realized right after I clicked it that the Gengar was still on screen. And I was like, Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm looking at Yaxu so here, and I, I think uh, I'm looking pretty good, and I'm gonna be able to finish the run. I couldn't find a, a PB time for Yaxu uh, or Yaxu before. Um, does anyone happen to know what the PB was? Um, He's at 310 for sure. Okay. I feel like. Yeah, because I looked at like the schedule and the brackets and stuff and didn't see a, a time on there, so. He would have posted it in the Discord somewhere. Uh, gotcha. 
Because he went into the tournament with no PBs, and he's improved quite a lot since he started. Yeah, that's just a testament to how new runners can pick up this game um, and do well pretty quickly. Um, you know, the beginner route is very friendly and easy to go through and learn. It's not too bad, and it, I'd say it's a pretty accessible game um, for beginners to pick up and do quite well at it and play in events like these. Three oh eight, yeah, confirmed. <laughs> so moving on to the last little fight. Hopefully, uh, Pidgeot's pretty nice to Yoxo. Yeah, I had a bold Nido King minus minus attack plus defense. Oof. Minus attack know. buddies. <laughs> I don't know if you saw Iron. I had a naughty Eevee and an 1100 CP star. Oh, damn. I knew I heard your CP was good. I didn't know about the, uh, the nature. That's pretty awesome. Yes, and you're on pretty good pace by the sounds of it. And then you had a bit of trouble, I guess, with a misclick. I, I was on three flat place, uh, three flat pace out of Koga, but Koga kind of screwed me over. I had one Psychic left out of Koga. Oh. <laughs> and oh God. my attempt at saving that was to Hydro Pump, Fire Blast, the Vile Plume, and Rival 5. But Hydro Pump missed, and then the Vile Plume one shot me. Oh no. Oh. And then I revived... I revived the star. And then was just instantly shot again, like, in a matter of seconds, the star was just dead again. <laughs> Pedal dance is a great move. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so Yaxo hopefully heals here. Yes, okay. Avoiding the quick attack. Both my star oh. and Eevee took plenty of siestas. Did anyone get double Moonstone? I don't think so. This round. I, w I wasn't in time to get it. Yeah, I with thought. That horrible, with that yeah. horrible start plus. Yeah, I didn't know what time the Pinker Runners set their switch to, but I saw a headstrong check for it, right? I think you were in time. I double checked for it, but I set for 11.33, and I had so many Pokemon before I even got down there that. Mm -hmm. I yeah, Bulbasaur, Charmander, a couple <laughs> nice extra Pokemon. That Charmander showed up right away. Early Rhyhorn too, which was very nice. I wasn't sure if I should actually catch the Charmander originally. I went towards it because it was the shape of a Machop, and then I realized from the sound I heard Charmander. I was like, "Okay, well I'm already running into it." <laughs> yeah, you don't expect that rare spawn right there when you no. walk into Rock Tunnel. I'm just glad it got in. Yeah, it's not a guaranteed catch, right, in Rock Tunnel. I think it's like... No, it, it was really just low. Just over 50, I think. It's really low with Double Great Ball, too. Oh yeah, I'd also like to shout out Furist. I caught a Furo. That one's for you, buddy. Also, while we're chatting, Yaxo has finished his yeah. rival fight. Yay! And we are getting ready to call time. Very nice to see all three runners finish. Doesn't happen every time. GG's. GG's all around. Hey, GG to Yuxo.
with a 31801. Given uh, <laughs> bad luck and stuff that happened throughout the run, I'd say finishing is it, not bad at all. Um, especially with the 318, given the craziness that happened. So, very exciting race we had today. Jackson, Hello. Join us there. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, GG2. GG. GG had strong. Uh, that run was very bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your thoughts on how the run went? Um, I, was, I was so tired the entire run, so yeah, I played very bad. Uh, and I got very bad road, road 10, uh, no leader on for a moment, so... Yeah, that so, took forever. Was, yeah. Yeah, I saw you go back and forth bad. there. That would be better next round. Yeah, that's one benefit of this format is that it's not one and done, but yeah. rotate some rounds, get multiple tries, runners can improve for sure. Um, so that's one thing that's very exciting about how the tournament's being done this year. All right, so legging anything else, or should we uh, just kind of wrap up here yeah i just want to say uh gg to all three of our runners today um obviously <laughs> the game decided to hand y'all uh varying lumps and you all did a phenomenal job responding to uh what this game dealt out i mm -hmm. uh, no matter what you all three of you should feel proud of how you ran today uh, there was a lot of crap thrown at you <laughs> by the game. And I think, uh, yeah, it was handled quite well by all three runners. Good game. GG's for sure. ITY. Uh, so if we're looking at the calendar here, do you have the calendar we can look up for the next matches? There we uh, go. Yeah, so, boom. Perfect. So there's two more matches for this round uh both of them are going to be tomorrow both of them are going to be on this twitch channel um so at three eastern we'll have thomas patrick t pat um and furist and oh sorry i'm gonna butcher this but um g liffy um gonna be playing at three o'clock and then immediately after that we'll have randall pokataxity and burner um so some very good runners are going to be back next time. And I mean, I expect T Pat and Furious to be very competitive. And then Randall, Poke Taxi, and Burner will also be very competitive. So it should be very exciting to see that up. So Randall says the T Pat Fury GIF one is pending. So pay attention to the Discord, I guess. That will be updates on that. Yeah, but it sounds six... like there's some inclement weather issues. So that may or may, may or not may not have to get rescheduled okay so stay tuned for the first race but second race tomorrow at 6 30 eastern so that should be exciting and shout out to all our runners um be sure to follow them on twitch and you know check out their streams as they keep playing this game and uh any final words or shout outs from runners here well thanks for thanks for a great race folks that was uh that was the time. Yeah, thanks for the great race. Also, screw yeah. Koga. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. And we will see you next time.